In three, two, one, and we're back with the All Elite Movie Rants podcast. Hope you guys are ready for a very special episode of the All Elite Movie Rants podcast because we're going to be discussing, dissecting, ranting all the good and all the bad of the MonsterVerse franchise. That's right, we're going to be talking about Godzilla 2014, Godzilla King of the Monsters, the 2019 film, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla vs. Kong, and to talk about these four movies and the entirety of the franchise, I thought to myself, man, I really need somebody who like, loves and adores this franchise to get a different perspective on it, right? And that person is making his All Elite Movie Rants debut. I just did the math and turns out I've known this guy for 10 years. 10 years. I, I genuinely didn't even know that until I like right now decided to do the math to see how long we knew each other. But, damn, that's crazy. But he is our special guest for this episode, making his debut to the podcast. He is the director, writer, creator, as far as I know, for Five Nights at Freddy's Demons of the Past. Check that out if you haven't. So without further ado, let's welcome John, a.k.a. Novonix. Okay, we're good. Hey, John, how's it going? Hello, Andy. It's nice to join you on your show. I know, it's about time. How long have we been planning this? Probably around uh, two to three months, to be honest. Probably even longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got a new special guest this time. We got John. I'm not going to roll your R. What happened? Who's John? <laughs> <laughs> they all know. I've shouted out your Novonic Studios YouTube channel, Instagram, as well as your TikTok on here a few times already. So they, oh, they don't know you as John. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who John is. John, that, aka Novonix. Oh, he's the he's that bastard. Oh that right, tried to, John's been dead for five years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a completely different guy. My name is Novo. You're Joan. Or, yeah, I'm Joan. Joan Royo. That's who you. <laughs> Joan are. Royo. Yeah, I'll take that. Doesn't roll his R's. <laughs> um, how you been? I've been pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, just working on a movie here. What about you? I've been. I mean, like I've, we talked about this on the ride over here editing over here all the work we've been putting in true and all that, that stuff true. it's all a pain but luckily we'll get to you know what do you call it release some stress talk about stuff we're gonna talk about your f- i don't know if it's your favorite thing ever but i know it's one of the topics where we start talking about it and you're like yes sir that's what i want to do oh i know let me know coming. when and where right we're gonna be talking about the <clears throat> monster verse as the wise words of optimus prime <clears throat> let them come <laughs> Overall, what do you think about the MonsterVerse? About everything we've gotten? Are you happy with what we've gotten? Are you a little disappointed by what we've gotten? What you okay. feel about it? Okay, I'm going to go off right now. Go right ahead. MonsterVerse. Okay. I am an absolutely massive Godzilla fan. My father introduced it to me when... In my younger heydays, when I was like around three or four, so I've been with the franchise for a long, long time. I've always dreamt of an American Godzilla film. Then we got Zilla, and Zilla was <laughs> you don't even a lot know. of fish. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a T Rex. That's all he is. Yeah, he's a big giant iguana T Rex thing, and like I said, he's a lot of fish, giant piece of shit. But, hey, look what that led to. Legendary acquired the rights from Toho. And we got the masterpiece known as Godzilla 2014. And then its predecessors right after. And I'll tell you what. Probably my favorite MonsterVerse film is a tie between, I want to say, 2014 or GVK. That, that That's a good one, to be honest. Otherwise known as Godzilla vs. Kong. True. Now, out of all the Godzilla movies, and there's like, there's a lot of them, which Godzilla movie is your favorite? Or is this like Godzilla 2014 slash GVK, one of your favorite Godzilla movies? Right now, I would say, like, movie-wise, I would probably have to go with Godzilla 2014 due to its storyline, the cinematography, and everything. The cast. The casting as well. It's beautiful. It's great. However... Favorite Godzilla film, legendary Godzilla film, mind you, would have to be Godzilla vs. Kong. It's just absolutely amazing. Just everything goes off the walls. Um, the villain, Mechagodzilla. Whew. 
It's literally what it literally. So like 2014 Godzilla came out, right? And we were just like, oh, fantastic. We need more Godzilla. And then King of the Monsters, they're like, oh, we'll give you more Godzilla. But you know the human stuff that we worked so hard on? Yeah, we're going to throw it out the window. And we're like, no, no. It's like we can't get one or the other. And then GVK, they're like, here's the stuff, okay? We're going to give you not too much complain, not too much to complain about. And then extra monster fighting shit. And then they did fantastic. <laughs> um, well, okay. Let's start off with 2014. Fuck it. 2014. Okay. Do you remember the hype leading up to this movie? I remember when they first announced it. I was like, oh, my gosh. We're getting another Godzilla movie. It's about time. At the same time, I was nervous, though. Because look at last time we had a, a Godzilla movie. I got a little story about this. I went up to... Okay. I went up with my dad up to L.A. And we're staying at his hotel when he was working. And then all of a sudden, I was scrolling through YouTube. And voila! It felt like it was my birthday. <laughs> they released the trailer for Godzilla 2014. And the hype behind it was unbelievable like i've been waiting for this movie for so damn long i remember that trailer it's fantastic of course it's just so mysterious the hype building up with it brian and, cranston's in it oh yeah like those uh, those a lot of youtube channels that are speculating like oh yeah what's this new monster attacking the train like remember there was like a little train in one of the trailer yeah. shots and i was wondering like what the hell could it be and I seen some early concept art of the Mudos. They look nothing like how they did in the movie. But I'm so glad they kept the Mudos a secret because when I seen them in the actual movie in theaters, I was blown away. I'm Dude, like, literally, wow. like, I, I've seen, I remember, so for me, um, I remember, I think I had seen the 1998 Godzilla, right? Mm -hmm. And then we got Comcast for the first time. And you remember Comcast had like a huge library of shit that you can just watch. Oh, back they had a gods all the Godzilla movies, and I sat there for like, I mean after school and all that shit. Um, <laughs> I sat there and I watched all of them, right? And you know, there's your favorites. There's the Rodans. There's the Mon. There's all there. There's all the common ones. Everybody's favorite. Destroy. Uh, all those things, right? The Mutos. When I first saw them, were like, yo, these are like sleek, and I love the design. And then it's been it's been nine years. I think just a month ago, we celebrated Godzilla 2014's ninth birthday. Really? Yeah. Damn, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nine years, dude. Nine years. It's been nine years. <sighs> and to this day, every time I rewatch that movie, I'm like, this Mudo design, I just love. I, both the designs, the ones that the guy and the girl designs, male and female ones. Well, I, think, I genuinely think they're like one of the best designed... Um, titan slash kaiju monsters we've seen in the entirety of every godzilla movie yeah best new design to be honest because um comparing them to some of the newer designs from the monsterverse i want to say the mudos are just unmatched i know a lot of people will be like oh it's a gener generic american design i'm like not really no sure it has cloverfield monster-esque biology wise but still it's a Pretty impressive design for being an insectoid kaiju because it's parasitic, uh, parasitic, and they fed on the Godzilla species. Yeah, I was just you know? about just one of the things I put down. Like we're gonna let's talk about one the Muto design from how they look, like we just mentioned, they're badass. To their sound design, the whole the mom screaming when she's ever attacking or whatever. To their like communication, I don't even know how to like exp I don't even know how to explain like the sound that they make when they're um communicating kind of a little clicking kind of like i was a like little, morse code type of thing like a like a little bit of like croaking type exactly. thing. kind of like the grudge and the predator i also. love their designs so much dude they're honestly they're they're so good and i was also gonna ask you because i think i don't want to say it was controversial but i remember people bringing it up when i would watch reviews and people talking about it and that is godzilla's redesign in this movie Oof. okay so one thing i'll oh, go ahead go ahead go off i'm gonna let you go off okay I remember when the <coughs> sorry. I remember when the design was first revealed. I was like, "Holy shit. They actually did it. The perfect American Godzilla design. So much better than the Zilla." A lot of people, however, were calling him fat. I was just about to say. <laughs> and I'm like, "He's not fucking fat. He's realistic." People when they when they say fat, they talk about um when he fur when we, he first meets the Muto, you know when that they're in the airport and he does that stomp, 
People are like, yo, hey, he's, yo. Got, he's got cankles. He's fat. <laughs> he and I was just like, feet. I was just like, <coughs> I don't know. Because like the weight of the Godzilla really um, speaks to the movement of Godzilla. He moves, he just moves slow in the God, in that specific movie. Every other movie moving forward, he gets faster. Oh, yeah. Motherfucker's been training. <laughs> He's lost some weight too. He's a lot more leaner and buffer in the like the later. Scarier, films. dude. Oh yeah. He's terrifying in GVK. <laughs> oh, he's a beast in GVK. He beat the living shit out of Kong. Yeah. So Godzilla 2014, I think for the first time, for me, that for instance, um, it was the first time where I actually was just like, whoa, this human stuff is actually pretty fucking good. Oh yeah. A little too good. This is like this is like this is a Brian Cranston movie that just so happens to have Godzilla in it. Oh, okay. Here's my complaint. They kill- first complaint of the movie of the, of okay. the podcast. They kill off Brian Cranston oh, way yeah. too Dude, soon. That's Why? A, that is my biggest. Why? So so, let's get out. I want to get out one of my complaints right away. It is um like we said, I think this movie is phenomenal. The biggest problem i have with it is there's only nine minutes of godzilla in it true and it's not it's it's like here's a snippet like here's the start of the fight cut away they're about to fight again cut away oh shit there's godzilla cut away and then we don't really even in the final like 25 minutes of the movie we get way more godzilla fighting the mudos but again it's just like quick and then cut away and then the scenes where they linger on their fight, all in the dust in the city. Oh, peak, peak! It just looks so good. Like I love it. But um, yeah, that's my main main complaint with it. I think the biggest thing that Godzilla twenty fourteen struggles with is having such a great um, character in Brian Cranston, whose name I don't know. Um, Brian Cranston in it, and then the relationship between him and his um his son Ford. Yeah. Right, and we only see them as like adults together for like ten minutes, maybe, and then they kill off Brian Cranston's character. I don't know why they did that. That's and for me, I feel like those for how how long of how long is he in the movie before he dies? Mm, I'm gonna throw out a random number and just say like twenty minutes. 20 minutes. I'm going to say 25 at the most, right? Um, Those first 25 minutes of the movie with no Godzilla are arguably the best 25 minutes in the entire movie. His character name, uh, to retract on your statement, his name is Joe Brody. Joe Brody. Who's Ford? Ford Brody. Yeah. That's the son. Yes. Okay. And then don't forget the Scarlet Witch was in there for like a quick... You know, and she did nothing. Did nothing. <laughs> Why was she up there all this time? Oh my god, dude. Regardless, um he's in the movie for twenty five minutes, Brian Cranston, and then he dies. And I think the movie really I don't want to say it struggles, but like I feel like the rest of the cast, as good as Aaron Taylor Johnson's character is, um I'm just not as interested in him going through the whole Godzilla stuff yeah. than I would be if it was like Brian Cranston. I feel like it really drops, I don't want to say it drops off way too much, but like Brian Cranston dies and the feeling you get of Brian Cranston being there is never like picked up again by yeah. any other character. It, it kind of fades away. Like I would say the two actors that carry the film besides Godzilla himself is probably Cranston and don't forget freaking, uh, Dr. Sarazawa. Sir- dude, Sarazawa's bad ass yes. in this movie. Let them fight. Exactly, dude. <clears throat> I remember I did a little quick review on my Instagram for it. And, like, I tend to try to do, like, a sentence, like, a little quote from the movie. And the first thing, the thing I put for Godzilla 2014 was let them fight. Let them and then fight. I go on. Um, he's great in this movie. Oh, yeah. I love him. But um, I feel like this movie, I don't know. I feel like this movie could have done more with. Should have done more with Brian Cranston. Like that's the real fault of this yeah, movie. That, that is, if they Brian Cranston not being in it enough, and then Godzilla is weird. They're two best. The two best things about this movie, Godzilla and Brian Cranston, are like combined in this movie for like forty minutes. Walter White was Godzilla. That would have been oh, peak. Oh <laughs> my gosh! He'll be like Godzilla. Why? Why are you blue? 
<laughs> oh a little dude, freaking Brad dude, dude when, for you guys. In the, when I was in the theaters and I saw his tail light up first, I was like, oh my gosh, they're doing it. Yeah, like, I did not expect that. Like, people were speculating, is he going to have atomic breath? But when I seen that, like, I was surprised. I was blind going into this movie. I was giddy as fuck, dude. Oof. Just hearing that sound, the and it gets louder as it's traveling up his tail up to his head it was was music to my ears dude in the wise words of matt hardy it was orgasmic (laughs) dude needs to stop wrestling oh oh yeah he's uh it's painful watching him wrestle him and his brother he should just do segments for here on out i I, just dude just go home you 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 won (laughs) You won life, okay? He did with Reppy Hardy. Exactly. So. You have kids, and there's a video of him, his wife took of him, where he's carrying every single belt he's ever won. And he has a lot. Yeah, and he has a lot. So he's just carrying them. It's just like, you just hear the belts clinging together. And I'm like, dude, you won. Just stop. Like, I think he had to get surgery on his lower back because Ow. his um his, did, his spine fused. and his tailbone were fusing. Yeah. I was like, ugh, dude. Oh. And I can't, I can't even though he says he feels better than ever, like I can see it. Like you, you look stiff. Yeah, you look. St- and I don't know. I, I'm sure like no one was ever gonna fully recover from that. Oh yeah. But still, but still. You gotta use stem cells for that type of oh, procedure. Dude. So there. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he should be hanging it up soon. True. Now moving. I feel back like I feel like him and his brother are just trying to fucking win the tag titles. Oh yeah. Now moving back on to Godzilla. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> we. I, this always happens. This literally always happens. Me and Adam <laughs> always go off on tangents. Um, shit. I don't know what I was saying. Um, yeah. So, what final, was the last thing I said? Final rating for 2014. I felt like we covered like the whole gist of it. Yeah. What rating would you give it? If I'm not mistaken. I gave it originally. Go ahead and fill some time while I, I look for this. I want to say you gave it a seven or an eight. I think it was a seven. I think I gave it an eight. I gave it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah, and that is strictly because <laughs> Brian Cranston, who should have like been like, imagine if this movie was more like because um, Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Cranston play father and son in this movie, and they're kind of like you know far apart. They don't they don't have a really good relationship anymore. Imagine if this movie was just let's get through this, and then through the end of it, you're like, oh my gosh, you know what? And he finally meets his fucking grandkid. Like imagine if it was like a father son movie. It should have with just Godzilla in it. In this movie, maybe it would have been a nine. I still would have complained about Godzilla barely being in this movie. <laughs> I actually um, to counteract your statement. My, in my opinion, I actually enjoyed the build-up to seeing Godzilla for the very first time, Americanized, besides Zilla. We don't count that. I don't even know what that is. I, I don't know who that is. The Iguana that's, that's an imposter. <laughs> that thing is playing Among Us. <laughs> I guess you could say that's pretty sus. <laughs> my God. <laughs> but anyway, I enjoyed the build-up. Sus Zilla right there. Sus Zilla. I enjoyed the build-up. However... The cutaways. The cutaways are my only takeaway from the film that I did not enjoy. I did not... Cutting away from Godzilla? The fight? Yes. Yes. Like, especially the fight in Hawaii. Dude, that would have been amazing. Man. It's like you're building up to a cutaway. Like, if you're going to do that once, okay, I get you. But you're doing it every single time they're about to fight. Yeah, that's... That's something, that's like my only valid criticism of the film is the cutaways. Cause I'm like, what would you give it on a scale from 1 to 10? I'll give it an 8 as well. 8 as well. Okay. However, a little fun fact. People, when this movie was about to come out, people were speculating the male Muto. I call him the Mufo because he's a massive unidentified flying organism, mind you. Oh, right. So, and T and Muto is terrestrial. Yeah. Well, they're both terrestrial, but that guy can fly. So I'm going to call a Mufo. But anyway, he's a mofo. That's yeah, this, he is. this mofo, <laughs> <laughs> this mofo goes in the water, and people were speculating. I'm like, is that Rodan? Is that Rodan? I'm like, uh, no, it's not. They they stated that the only Toho monster is going to be Godzilla. But as soon as the film came out, rumors started going around and buzzing and buzzing. That legendary acquired the rights for. I remember when they announced that they w- they'd get the rights to all of them. I was like, no way, Mother don't do it Kidora to me. Kidora and Rodan, and there was an unknown fifth monster. Real and- quick, 
Um, I know we just gave our ratings for uh, for Godzilla 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think of the ending when, um, you know, Godzilla falls over? Oh, yeah. I heard people complaining about that, too. They're like, it's Godzilla. Why is he falling over? Okay. I was like, dude, first off, I'm going to say this. This I don't want to say this is going off on a tangent, but I do the same thing with when people talk uh, shit on Batman. When they put him in a movie and he kills. I'm like, dude. Not every Batman has to be your Dark Knight Batman, perfect, doesn't kill, and all that stuff, right? This Godzilla is old. Dude, he just got his ass beat by two Mutos. Like, they were beating the shit out of him, right? Yeah. And these are Mutos that would legit, like, they killed off, I don't know if they killed off all the Godzillas, but they no. killed off his, they were killing him off. They preyed on his exactly. species. Exactly. He took two on, one that was, like, big as fuck, and the other one could fly. I'm pretty sure, and like, has anybody been jumped by two people? You're going to go out of there like, oh, fuck, gosh. Oh, duh. <sighs> and don't forget, too, they were going for realism for 2014. I, it was dude, a lot more grounded. You know, we were, we've been talking about a lot of the, the cast and Godzilla being in this movie. We haven't talked about the fucking uniqueness of the shots in this movie, the perspective in this movie from the human. Like, a lot of the shots in this movie are perspective from humans looking at Godzilla. Like, that's a lot of the visuals. That's a lot of how we see Godzilla. From when you first see him in the Hawaii airport, you see we're with the, we're with the humans in the airport, and you see his foot, just his foot. And when we're oh dude, my favorite shot is when they're jump skydiving through the clouds the and they're jump. Ra- oh Beautiful. my god, okay. dude! As a filmmaker, out of the entire MonsterVerse, I want to say Godzilla twenty fourteen is the best looking, best best shot, film, cinematography, yes. acting, why everything yes is perfect to a T. So, out of all the MonsterVerse films, from a filmmaker standpoint, twenty fourteen is the best one. But from a Godzilla fan standpoint, I'm going to have to give the cake to... King of the Monsters, huh? Mm-hmm. Looking back at it now and then watching GVK, I'm probably going to have to go with GVK. The only, only, only reason I say it's King of the Monsters is because it, just, it just gives you more. It does. King of the Monsters is... I remember... Okay. Before we get into King of the Monsters, let's go okay. into our second movie of the MonsterVerse, and that is... Monkey. Island. <laughs> Kong Skull Island came out in... We just said it. 2017. What do you think of Khan's design? Okay, I actually really loved his design. He looked like a giant Sasquatch, and... That's essentially what he was when they first fought in... Like, True. the first ever Godzilla vs. Kong? True. We don't just get monkey. We get big monkey. They scaled Angry this monkey. Fool. They scaled this fool up from previous Kong iterations. I still love that previous King Kong movie we got. I love it. That movie's way more terrifying. Oh, the Peter Jackson one? Yeah. Oh, terrifying. Oh, okay. You know what terrified me? The bugs. Dude, when they fall in that thing. Ugh. Dude, when I was a kid, I had to fast forward that part. I couldn't. Me too. I was like. No. I, ha- I hate bugs. I have arachnophobia. And with that. Ooh, that, ah, that that was a nightmare. That actually gave me a nightmare for quite some time when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, I could I could not watch it. I my I think this is everybody's favorite part. I might be wrong. In uh, King Kong two thousand five, Godzi- Godzilla, <laughs> King Kong versus those three T Rexes. Oh, the V Rex. Oh, oh, dude. Did you ever play the King Kong game? I did. That dude. was oh, <laughs> that game was hard, dude. There's a part where like you have to, you're Kong and you have to save the girl from the pterodactyls. I would always I struggled so hard on that. I don't think I ever beat the game. It was so hard. Yeah, like I I didn't beat the game either. Like I was halfway through with the Granted, game. Granted, I was like seven or eight when I played it, but still, it was hard. I remember being in a human mission where you're like in a swamp and you have to throw these fire spears at these bug things or something like that that's lurking in the swamp. Ugh. Ugh. Dude, that swamp scene, I can't. Ugh. You know what's crazy? I don't think I've seen the King Kong movie in like over a decade. Same. I didn't <laughs> because the bugs. That. I didn't rewatch the that. The bugs. Yeah, but um, we got Kong, Skull Island, um, a timepiece. I don't... I'm all for timepieces. I'm all for timepieces. Um, we got too huge Brian Cranston was a huge star in that movie I don't think in 2014 I don't know if there's any other huge star in that movie that I can think of off the top of my head I know Aaron Taylor Johnson he's just a star for Kong Skull Island we basically we get got the MCU meets MonsterVerse quite literally our literally. three leading uh, characters are 
um, Tom Hiddleston, Blue. Brie Larson, mm-hmm. and Samuel L. Jackson. So we get and Nick. only one of them is good. <laughs> we get Nick Fury, Loki, and Captain Marvel. Interesting. <laughs> so I remember when I first watched this movie, I really enjoyed everything about it. But I wasn't, like, blown away. Uh, rewatching it, I've rewatched it twice in the last, like, four months. Lo- Loki's character. Tom Hiddleston's character? Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. What even... What even is it? I said it in my uh, quick movie review on Instagram. I said, it's like they wanted another huge star to be in this movie. And they're like, hey, Loki's free. Let's get him in on this. <laughs> and they're like, okay, okay, what's he going to do? And they're <laughs> like, uh, uh, um. They're like, hey, hey, hey he, 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 he's a hunter. Even though we don't see him hunt anything down in the movie. True. He even says to, um. Um, oh, what's that guy's name? What guy? There's so many guys. Oh my gosh, John Goodman's character. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says it to him. He's like, "You wanted a hunter. Now when am I hunting? Right? And I'm sure they tell him monkey. But but we never see him do like, oh, there's tracks, and we never see him pick up dirt and taste it. Even though that would have been bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's close. That would have been something. He doesn't give us nothing. Yeah, the studio executive. The only thing he tells us is like, there's water, which means land should be over there. The studio executives were like, hey, Loki, we should get Loki. <laughs> Dude, the executive who pitched that was just like, hey, I got a pun for you guys. Oh, my gosh. And then we got Brie Larson's character. I love Brie Larson. I'll say this. She has... Her character's slightly better than Tom Hiddleston's. Yeah, she, but brought, she brought the smoke show to the movie, so we got to give. She's that. still, she's still nothing. I don't know why people people hate her. People Brie hate Larson. her because of Captain Marvel. I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. I love her so much, but people hate her because of Captain Marvel. <laughs> the bias is crazy. I, I, don't I don't get it. I don't understand that. But she did this movie. She, wait, this movie was before Captain Marvel, so yes, I don't think was. they hated her as much as that for this. But she's literally just there it's like they brought her in to eventually give us the whole you know kong with the with the woman scene yeah that's and, like purpose which weirdly that. feels so out of place in this movie it's just random it kind of does but yet again i was expecting that to happen because i was on, expecting it, it to happen on, too. it's big monkey big monkey has always loved it's like the kong staple yeah right but i it feels even though it's a staple in kong it's feel it feels really out of place. It's like there's lo- lo- Loki. What the fuck? <laughs> Loki. Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson <laughs> are looking for something, right? And Kong just happens to appear, and Brie Larson's just like, she's like fucking Chris Pratt in Jurassic World. <laughs> I can't wait to do an episode. They should have. They should have got Chris Pratt for this movie. He was like, hey, 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 <laughs> cut that shit out. Oh my god, dude! But they're like, it feels so out of place. And then the only thing I feel like is good about her character is. Uh, this choice they make to have her a photographer and every now and then you'll get her taking a picture and you get a little little split second of that picture being taken and how they, it looks i i love it a little fun I've, fact kong skull island premiered a year after harambe's death so that's saying a lot <laughs> it was a nexus event <laughs> what came first wait it's 2017 2017. Harambe's death was in 2016. No, I was going to say oh, Loki had a big year. Because he was in Thor Ragnarok that year. Oh, he was? Yeah, you're right. Wow. That movie sucks. What? I don't like Thor Ragnarok. You don't like Ragnarok? No. And I absolutely hate love Thor and, Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder? Oh, okay. Awful, dude. Awful. Probably Awful. one of the worst It is MCU the worst movie. MCU yes. movie. It is the worst MCU what movie. What the hell happened? What, what I'd happened? I'd answer that question, but we'd go off for like an hour. Even th- even Thor's actor freaking... Uh, he, he just didn't... You know at the end of that movie when it says <laughs> Thor will return? Him and Taika saw that, and they're like, oh, I guess... They, they didn't even know that. Uh... Yeah. Back on track, though. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brie Larson's character is like, again, the two our two main characters really just feel like they're there to bring, to give this movie some star power. Yeah. Which is weird saying, because we got, what's his name, John Goodman. We also got Samuel L. Jackson. 
We got part of the NWA in this. I got half of it. Not half of them. We got some of them. We got John C. Riley. John C. Riley is my favorite character in this movie. Really? I absolutely love him. Love him to death. So funny. Um, the whole tribe that they bring in is very interesting. Every now and then when I rewatch the movie, and you know how they're hidden when they first meet them? I look for them. I'm like, oh, this guy's right there. I actually enjoyed the tribe. The, the whole human dynamic with Kong, with the tribe, that's yep. actually pretty cool. Unique yeah. take. So. A lot more civil, not really like savage. Like, yeah. You know, so that's what I enjoyed about him. Then again, that savage scene in, in King Kong. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. That, that's a whole, Scary. Complete, a whole completely different take. Two different movies. Two completely different movies. This movie was more trying to expand like, hey, we got Kong now. We want to put Kong against Godzilla. That's like the whole thing. And they're trying to expand the lore of the monster first so they can yeah. build up this big fight between them. That's like the main thing. And I would say it worked. After this movie, it leads up to King of the Monsters because obviously Godzilla needs a sequel. And then After they lead, promised us. Yeah, duh. And... Um, then we lead to the masterpiece known as GVK. Yeah. Um, so we talked a lot about the cast, surprisingly. I feel like we talked more about Godzilla in the last movie than we did about the cast. Oh, true. But the cast in this movie, it's like, again, Samuel Jackson's character is really great. Oh, I love his character. He's, he's your bad guy. He's your human bad guy, and he works. Yeah. Um, John Goodman's character works. Uh, John C. Reilly's character is just so fun. Um, we'll get more on the characters in a bit. What I want to talk about is the skull crawler design. And what you think about the skull crawler design? Okay, skull crawler. Fun fact: it's actually an updated design from the original King Kong movie from back in the day. There was a scene with a little lizard with two legs and a big old long tail, and they are like, "Hey, let's bring it back, make it modernized," and that's how the skull crawler is born. And perfect design. I love it. it I looks, think it's terrifying. It's basically the lizard equivalent of. I can't say the name, but it's a Native American legend that starts with a W. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> well, if you had the word in front of me, I could probably say it. Whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I think their design is so great. I think it was very unique to not have it have two, like, hind legs in one of those things, just with something that drags itself. And it's not just a tail. Like, that thing's a, like, we see it launch Kong with its tail. Oh, yeah. Like, far. Like, just pick up uh, Kong like it's nothing. Um... I, I honestly feel like there's not much to say about Kong or the skull crawlers in this movie, which is weird because I enjoy, I don't know, it's weird. Honestly, the Kong, okay. the Kong and skull crawler stuff in this movie is, it's solid. I am, I can talk about the cast and problems I have about the cast, like decisions made way more than I do Kong because literally there's like nothing wrong with the Kong and Skull Crawler aspect of this movie. I have more of a problem with Skull Island, really. Because it... You can't... I, I don't know if you... You can, but, like, I can't help but compare this... This Skull Island to the last one. The last Skull Island was terrifying, dude. It was a... It felt terrifying. Oh, ugh. That, that... That swamp scene, dude. Yeah. Like, I felt like, um... Kong Skull Island, uh, they should have expanded more on the fauna, like the creatures and stuff. They should have yeah. showcased more. Like I know in one of the novels, they show like these creatures called a jackal, and it's kind of like this little raptor wolf hybrid type deal. I'm like, where's that at? We should have had that in Skull Island, the movie. Come on, like I wanted more monsters, like creatures I, i'm no i know we got the skull crawler which i'm thankful for i love the skull crawler but i'm saying like some smaller fauna to go after the people like i feel like they uh what's his name tom hilson's character whose name i don't remember um <laughs> let me look that up for you he mentions like here's all the stuff you have to worry about right and then john c Rice's character goes you hear those like singing slash tweeting you hear those aren't birds those are giant ants it, like it, those two scenes and those two like sentences are meant to like terrify us of this skull island what's his name james conrad yeah give me like a generic badass name what's your <laughs> name james conrad conrad uh, james james conrad. conrad the variant of loki in the monsterverse interesting <laughs> yeah um 
it felt like they did more of like telling us that this place is terrifying and less showing us that this place is terrifying. Because like for the most part, they just walk through this place like it's nothing. True. That, that, the that only thing true. that happens is they're like, all right, guys, we're going. Oh, my gosh. This dude got taken by this pterodactyl bird. I'll give you some notable scenes. Okay. One of my favorite scenes is when Kong is destroying the shit out of the copters. Okay, yeah. That was pretty badass, especially throwing that big old big ass tree and just pierce. Is that a monkey? <laughs> and then the yeah. scene just goes silent. Yeah, that's that badass. was a real good choice. And then Kong standing near the sunset. That's Ooh. badass. But that was yeah. in the trailer. Oh true, but still. It's badass. And don't forget the the scene, the introduction scene in the beginning. Uh I believe it's a is it a World War Two battle or a Vietnam? World War Two. World War Two? Yeah, with John C. Riley's character yeah. in the plane. That was pretty Yeah, those who seen their battles, but I'm like, in terms of trying to make Skull Island, like, they tell us it's a scary place to go because of the things you can encounter. Yeah. And they tell us things that are there. We don't see any of those things. Like, they don't tell us to be weary of the birds. They don't, like, they mention, like, Loki's character, Loki's like, character. Tom I really, character mentions disease, I bugs. really, I really want to see the ants that, that exactly. birds. Exactly. John C. Riley's character mentions giant, fat ants, but we don't ever see it. Yeah, true. Um... It's weird, yeah. Um, I love the cast, though, like the side characters. Yeah, I think the main thing they're going for is like, hey, we want to focus more on Kong and the Skullcrawler dynamic. So I think that's like the main thing that they were trying to establish here. Because now, looking back at it now, Skullcrawlers are like the staple of the MonsterVerse franchise. Like, they yep. make their glorious return in GVK. So. I wouldn't say glorious. <laughs> they make their return just <laughs> to do. die. Oh, but hey... They have to, <laughs> you got to build up the Mecha G somehow, you know? I mean, yeah, like, Kong did have trouble with, and I can only assume that was, like, the one that Mecha Godzilla kills is a, is a giant one. Huge skull crawler, mind you. Genetically modified. Yeah, so I guess there's that. But, like, still, I feel like the movie all around Kong's Clan is solid. It's solid. Um, I don't think anything stands out, though. Like, um,. Like, I've already made my piece with Kong being solid in the movie. And that's weird that it's just solid. Kong is just solid in this movie. The skull collar design, solid. Peak design. Peak design, yeah. Um, I do have a problem with what they did with some of the characters. I feel like they gave a lot of screen time to Tom Hiddleston's character and Brie Larson's character. And you know, they're your forefront, so I guess that makes sense. But Samuel L. Jackson's character, who's the third main character in this story, um, I don't have a problem with him. It's John Goodman's character. Like, he's a very interesting character that i would have loved for him to give us more than just like monsters exist oh Help john, me find them okay just a little reference too. john goodman's character foreshadows something in the beginning of the movie <laughs> washington's never gonna be this crazy again look what happens in king of the monsters exactly Ooh. i know but like they gave us um what's the name john goodman's character who's very interesting but we don't get a lot of him. We don't. And he get, it's just like, or it's like, um, eh, someone has to die. Let's get rid of him. And they just kill him off. Skull Crawler eats him. I'm like, guys, come on. <laughs> the whole, oh, and that whole gas. That was pretty space, badass. The whole scene with Loki just like, oh, let me put this mask on and run. And now I'm cutting these weird Terra pigeons with a sword. No. <laughs> I actually just, enjoyed no. the gas scene. The gas scene was like... It was cool, cool, but it, yeah. it was just like, we need Tom Hiddleston to look like a badass. True. Let's have him POV these fucking Terra Pigeons. Terra Pigeons. Is that what you're calling them now? I'm calling them that now. Terra Pigeons. Terra Pigeons. Okay. That's that or Pidgeractyls. Pidgeractyls. <laughs> I... Ah, uh, Yeah. Um, I feel like Samuel Jackson's character was, even though he got more screen time than uh, John Goodman's character, another interesting character who I, we kind of get how his mind works. I would have loved more of him. Oh, would have loved more of him. We should, did we, did we at least get one motherfucker drop from him? No, he was about to. Oh, and then yeah, Kong was right. just like, Kong, hey, yeah. hey, this is PG-13. Can't that's say that. right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, like I said, overall, this movie is solid. The side characters are what really do it for me. Like, they're the best part about this movie. Oh, yeah. We, I we, like, that. I like them more, and John C. Reilly's character, 
than he was a great our character. three main characters. Especially in, when he gets back home, too, after being stranded dude, that, on the island. That, yeah, that was emotional. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, that's like the best scene. In the, that's weird saying. That ending scene where they find John C. Wiley's character on here and they take him back home and he meets his son. How long has he been there? 28 years? I think so. Right? And he meets his uh, his wife and his, his son after 28 there, years. Son. Waiting for him, too. It's such a good scene. Oof. It's so good. And that's the best. It's weird saying in the MonsterVerse, in a monster movie with Kong and these really cool looking skull crawlers on this island that's supposed to be very deadly. The best thing or the best like scene is just John C. Riley meeting his family. Oh, yeah. It was emotional. That's why. Usually emotional scenes have I love the. I loved even right before that scene when the movie like kind of ends and you get um, Brie Larson taking a picture of him and it's like in black and white. Love that. And he's singing. Love it. And then him singing it into transitioning to the actual song, really good. Um, at the end of the day, I gave even like I said, it's solid. It's a solid seven out of ten for me. I would have to say the same. I'll give it a seven point five. No, oh, we're not different. Oh, seven point five. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say we're entirely differing right now. I feel like we're gonna differ on the next movie though. Okay, let's so go. So we got Godzilla twenty fourteen in Godzilla in twenty fourteen. We got Kong School Island. That's the wrong movie. <laughs> we got Kong School Island in twenty seventeen. Correct. Two years later, five years after the first Godzilla movie. Too long. The wait the wait killed me. You have no idea how long I've waited for and this. And the one. movie was like half worth it. <laughs> oh, okay. I see how it's gonna be. So we got Godzilla King of the Monsters in twenty nineteen. Okay, so uh, what's the first thing I say about this movie? Okay, so I feel like my Mine, our main complaint in Godzilla 2014 was there was like no Godzilla in the movie. And, but the characters were amazing. (coughs) In this movie, they're like, fuck your characters. Here, you want Godzilla? You want more monsters? Here's more Titans. And that's what they gave us. And that's exactly what the trailers gave us. A shitload of The trailers, yeah, exactly. Right? And it. I have, I have like two. This like movie's like there's two halves of this movie, right? Mm-hmm. I absolutely love and adore one half of this movie. The other half of this movie, I'll spit on and step on. <laughs> Hate. Okay, I'll tell well, you. We, th- we should talk about the good first. Okay, well, let me just get one complaint out of the way. Go right ahead. I felt like the trailers revealed way too much. They really did. They review. They pretty much revealed like spoiled the whole movie. The trailers. I'm like. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, they they did that way too much. They should have kept it more like 2014, to be honest. Even though I was hyped for every new teaser they dropped, they did it way too much. Small, but, slight complaint. Yeah, I but respect it. Overall, though, I love this fucking movie. It's crazy. It's probably the most Godzilla movie you could get out of the American audience. Like, wow. We get to see the on-screen, the big-screen appearance of King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan. We, we get all of them along with Godzilla and a few new monsters as well. And seeing them in theater, oh my, the inner child in me was screaming. I loved seeing King Ghidorah awaken, terrorizing all those soldiers in the Arctic. That scene was Bad amazing. Badass. And then seeing him tower over Godzilla when they were fighting Dude, the he's ice. Huge. I think that scene might be in the trailer where he's just like, you know, flexing, stretching all that shit. And you see Godzilla in the background, like they're about to fight. Dude, every now and then I'll when I get to that scene, I'll pause it. And I'm like, yo, huge. like Godzilla's up to his chest. And you still got his three long ass heads. And don't forget, too, Godzilla looked pissed when he was gonna fight Kidora. He's like, Why is this motherfucker still awake? Go back to sleep. And King Ghidorah, it's in okay, it's implied that he's an alien. Just it like in implied. the Toho movies. So yep, he's an alien. So I will agree with everything you just said. That everything Titan slash Godzilla in this movie is fantastic, dude. It's as Godzilla as any Godzilla movie gets. Mm-hmm. My hat's off to Michael Dotri or Dotri, however you pronounce his last name. He was the guy that directed uh, Krampus and Trick or Treat. So he has experience with horror and comedy and mystery. And he's a huge Godzilla fan. He actually had a few Godzilla and Pacific Rim cameos and Krampus as a little hint that, hey, I'm going to be directing the next film. So I'm absolutely massive fan of his. Huge inspiration for me. 
and in my opinion, he did a solid job, and I really want him to return to the MonsterVerse for a future film. I think, and we'll get to it, but the next monst- the next movie in the MonsterVerse is being directed by the same dude who directed GVK, I think? Correct. Yeah. And, and hey, I remember, he did great, so. I remember people were worried because he directed that awful Death Note movie on Netflix. Never seen it. People, I've seen Death Note, but I've never seen yeah, live action. People hated it. And so people were worried. Like I myself was a little bit worried. But once GVK came out, I'm like, okay, you're forgiven. This, you're good. this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you're good. You've been forgiven for your sins. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, just like you said, a bunch more Godzilla, bunch more monsters. And they're like, you want fighting? You got the fighting. You're going to fucking like it. That's what they told us. Um, Godzilla, I don't know if it, his design is slightly different, though. His um, dorsal spike things are different. They're more... Um, Classic. Classic, yeah. I was trying okay, to think of the there's word. A ex- there's a huge explanation why. Apparently in the middle of between 2014 and King of the Monsters... That's five years. Yes. Um, there was a comic that explained that Godzilla actually fought against this king or queen Muto. It was this giant Muto that awakened and... Godzilla had a pretty tough time going against it. Like, the thing ended up shattering its Godzilla's dorsal plates. Oh, shit. So, atomic rays just exploded Why couldn't out that be a movie? Mm, they, I wish it was, like, a little short film or something, a little tie-in. But, overall, that explains why Godzilla has different spines, because his were destroyed by this Muto. So, that's that explains the whole design change. But, hey, I, I, love, I love the new design. New Godzilla design is badass. Um, how, what was it going to say? <laughs> what do you think of Rodan's design? Rodan, okay. All the monsters. Fantastic adaptations of the Toho designs. Rodan, menacing. He is a pterodactyl from hell. He is badass. His new abilities. The only down the nitpick that I have is I wish he had kind of like a little fire beam. To go yeah, against, he's just yeah. like a bird. Yeah, but, but he drops fire balls. I just wish he had like a beam as well. But Mothra, beautiful, majestic, just absolutely amazing and stunning design. She actually looks intimidating, yet gorgeous. But King Ghidorah. Dude, they knocked it out, out of, of the, the park. park. Like there's some scenes where um, like we like close-ups of God, uh, Ghidorah flying and we see its face. Oh, dude, it's so good. It like, is. really good. It's absolutely, like, his design is probably the best in the movie, hands down. King Ghidorah yeah. is amazing, fucking amazing villain. I just love the whole s- symbolism. Like, it's, there was a lot of uh, religious symbolism in this film, which I really enjoyed, especially Ghidorah representing the devil. And having the little cross in that scene where Ghidorah's on top that of the volcano. That shot is um, the best, best shot, shot in the, of the entire movie. movie. Best, best shot, shot in the movie. Especially Ghidorah. It, it represents, too, uh, he perfectly encaptures the devil because in the Bible it states that he's Satan is a dragon, a three-headed beast, which is Ghidorah. And how he regenerates his head because he's not from this world, which... Like, the whole symbolism and everything, it's really underlooked, and I feel it's fantastic. That aspect of it is underlooked. It is. And I think it's it's underlooked because of... The human side. The human aspect of this movie, which we'll get into in a bit. But let's keep keep talking about the good, dude. Because that's all I want to focus on, but we're going to have to get into the bad. Yeah, like, I'm Um, I'm already getting chills talking about it because it's just... I just love the whole... The whole storyline aspect with the monsters, the symbolism, the cinematography. Uh, sure, there's a lot of filter effects. I know that's a big complaint for people. Like That's fine. But, hey, I enjoy it because Ghidorah causes storms and it helps cover up the CGI a bit and make the creatures more intimidating. Even then, like, in, compared to the 2014 Godzilla movie, everything Godzilla and Muta related is in the dark. Yeah, it and, is. And for good reason, right? Yeah. True. And this movie, they're like, we're going to give you each of these monsters in very many different uh, environments and lightings. Like, and we get Godzilla abilities. Ghidorah in, like, white, bluey snow, right? Yeah. Stuff can be covered up. And then we get him again in the water. somewhere in Mexico, and it's just all, like, red, orangey with <laughs> Rodan. And then we get, like, underwater stuff. And then we get, like, Mothra just being in water, like, glowing, radiant blue. It's This movie, although I don't think it's as visually stunning as, or how to say it? 
It's not as visually stunning as the last movie, as Godzilla like, 2014. Uh, okay, no. It no. doesn't have any unique. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to, to go it back. C- Cinematography wise, I want to say. 20, uh, 2014 takes it, but the doubt. visuals, the visuals, GVK takes not GVK. I meant <laughs> sorry, There's you're some, stuck on that movie. I'm dude. Stuck, <laughs> I want to go to that movie, but uh, King of the Monsters takes visually because it's just beautiful. Like literally each scene, a monster's in. You could make it as a background on your desk. I'll give you that. This like that. That is what this movie is. Desktop background worthy. It is. Um, this movie looks great. Like the, all the monsters look great. Um, but like, and don't forget, it's unique perspective shots from 2014. They're just threw out the window. True. And I guess you kind of have to throw out, throw that out the window because how are you gonna possibly? Because you're, you're gonna have to get human shots, perspective <laughs> shots from everywhere. Okay. So basically, as stated with Kong, basically the monsterverse is heading in a more campy direction, like the old Godzilla films, like. 2014 was this generation's Godzilla 1954, the first film, and basically. They, they make GVK real campy, dude. Yeah, they do. Like, However, Godzilla's always been campy besides the, the you He know, used the to dropkick people. Yes. However, that's what I enjoy about it. That's the Godzilla I grew up with. But, I, hey, I could appreciate every director's aspect on how they want to make the big G. 100% agree. Mm-hmm. But um, King of the Monsters, I felt like, it's probably one of my favorites, to be honest. I absolutely oh, like Godzilla movies in general. In general, I, I I really enjoy this movie. I usually, you know, I gotta skip some of the human parts. Like I feel like We're the Millie, talk about the human okay, stuff. I feel second. like the Millie Bobby Brown part. Let's just along, get into it. Like, let's get into it. The Millie so, Bobby Brown part quick, along with the mother, everything everything just, Godzilla monster wise is like ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Ten out of ten. The absolute the thing that r- makes me think twice about wanting to rewatch this movie is everything human related none of it none of it and this is like all of them included none of them none of them come even remotely close to any character in Godzilla 2014 they had 5 years to do this <laughs> script 5 years and i don't know how it's horrible <laughs> I don't get it. Even characters who I have no problem with, like the dude who, the dude with white hair, right? Oh, actually, I actually enjoyed his character. I know, but like, even like none of them, like they're not bad. Like characters like that aren't bad, but they don't hold a candle to any character in Godzilla 2014. No, yeah. Um, the, I don't know any of these guys' names, but um, oh, Millie Bobby Brown's character is the dirt worst. I think... <laughs> <laughs> this movie did what Kong Skull Island did. We need big name actors just to have in this movie. Madison Russell is her character's name. Is What's she's, his dad's name? Uh, Mark Russell. Mark Russell. And his wife is Emma Russell. So it was like the whole entire Russell family. They, I guess the dad is the least worst. But Millie Bobby Brown and her mom are, motivations in this movie are awful, dude awful and just like having characters in the movie Millie Bobby Brown makes no sense dude I I don't get it I I guess I just said it I just said I know why it's because they needed a star and Millie Bobby Brown is like the current mega star oh yeah because Stranger Things was hot at the time so that's why they're like okay we gotta bring her in and I Jane there's nothing redeemable (laughs) about her in this movie at all like, let's get into the mom's motivation. The mom is like, they get kidnapped, right? And then they're like, why did they get kidnapped? And then they release basically all the kaijus on the world, all the titans on the world. So on them. basically, she really didn't get kidnapped. She was in cahoots with the villain. I know. Which was that's what I'm saying. Joan. A plot twist. plot twist. No, she was in cahoots with the bad guys all along. And, she makes and her, her motivation. Humanity is a disease that must be cured. And these titans, they are the key to help our world live she literally said like when she was mourning her child because apparently godzilla from 2014 killed their child and yeah, she was just like when damage. i was like searching and looking and trying to figure out why this happened i came across an awakening right i, I came across the real reason why this happened humans are the problem okay <laughs> we need to we are the virus and the titans are when are you know the Titans are the answer. <laughs> we need to kill the whole world. 
<laughs> Blood sounds like Greta Thunberg. <laughs> Dude, I don't. How do you? It's like a complete 180. It's like being like, damn, my dog died. McDonald's, what the fuck? What? It's, like, it's like a pet response. It doesn't pet, click. Pet is like, oh, I'm so sorry your dog died. Anyway, McDonald's uses beef from dogs. Sue them. What the <laughs> fuck? What? Like, it made no sense. Like, so I was with everything in the movie, right? Like, Millie Bobby Brown wasn't even a problem yet. That happened, and I'm like, as she's explain, like they're FaceTiming, as they're she's explaining this, she it's like she has a a uh uh what do you call it a presentation ready. She's like, oh by the way, here's a PowerPoint presentation. Do you see the smog over there? Humans are the problem. You see the overpopulation? Humans are the. Pro- you just have these. You're like, hey wait, whoa, we can't call them right now. I I don't have my presentation <laughs> set up. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> I hate it so much. I mean, if she wants to blame someone, it's not just humanity in general. It's like, hey, take out the politicians. They're the one causing the problem. Sheesh, buzz. Oh, my God. But, Her um, problem is to, like, get rid of humanity? However, she was, okay, plot twist in the film. She, Another plot twist. She was, in fact, right. However, she wasn't right with Kitora. That was the wrong one to unleash. But each other Titan no, has revealed at the end of the movie they actually helped the environment and they coexisted with humans. So humanity wasn't the problem. And King Ghidorah was the wrong Titan to release because he's Here's not thing. from this world. He's meant to represent an invasive species. The One, devil. she so, didn't know that. Two, yeah. <coughs> their plan was to bring them all out one by one. Yeah. That was their plan. But, like, why would you start with Ghidorah? And I know that she didn't know... But like, it's like you know. had to have known that that one in particular is the one that's going to be the most destructive. Because like if they started with any other one, literally any other one, and there's like at least 10 other ones, Godzilla would have gone and just mutilated them. He wouldn't have killed them. He would have just put them in place like, hey, do my bidding. <laughs> Isn't there a which movie the is it? There's a Godzilla movie where like we just get kaijus coming out, ty- monsters coming out, and Godzilla just comes over and just fucking destroys all Final of them. Final Wars. That's, right uh, when the aliens took control of all the monsters. One thing I really yeah. okay, I'll say this. I'll, one thing I did enjoy because I don't like the story <coughs> in this movie. I don't like the story at all. One thing I didn't, I thought was really unique was the the whole bringing up of the orca, the you, the instrument they use, and I I love the whole like these aren't just monsters fighting anymore. Like there's a hierarchy. Godzilla's at the top of it, and whoever comes and challenges him is gonna get put in place. Right? I really love that aspect. I really enjoy that part Amazing of the movie. Amazing aspect. I, okay. I was like, I was like, damn, have we gotten this before in any other Godzilla movie? I don't think so, because just no. another monster pops up and they fight. The orca was probably one of the best modern ideas they added to Godzilla. Oh like, yeah, too I bad the story the fucking sucks. <laughs> And then, like, Millie, I know we said Millie Bobby Brown's character is horrible, but, like, literally, like, so okay, they get kidnapped, quote unquote, kidnapped, not really kidnapped, right? And it turns out, like, Maddie's known about this. Her character's known about this. Her mom's just been lying to her, but she's known. And they go with her. Somehow, like, even though these are dudes, like, she's with people that will kill anyone, right? Maddie just happens to be able to, like, they, how the fuck you can leave the orca unattended? <coughs> True, that should be like the They most. leave the orca unattended. She can easily just, she just unplugs it and takes it. What is her fucking plan, dude? What is her plan? Her plan is to just like, I'm going to take it to this baseball stadium because it's easy to get into and I'm going to play the sound out loud. I don't know what she expected. <laughs> and then she could just somehow fucking outrun Ghidorah's like electro blast. Oh no, that that should have been impossible right there because it's it's uh, gravity beams. That's what they are. So the gravity should have been shifted as well with electricity. She so. outran she been Ghidorah, dude. <laughs> she can't do that. She, she outran that. it. Oh my dude! I saw. So I made the poor decision to watch this movie twice in theaters. But hey, but hey, her. I actually seen it three times in theaters. theaters so that's how much I enjoy the movie. But her mom couldn't outrun the bad. <laughs> and she was in a car. You no, know, Ghidorah was smart this time. He's like, hey, I'm going to tip the car over. And then can't outrun. Oh, I hate it so much. And then like Godzilla pops up all juiced up. And oh, we didn't even talk about Sarazawa oh, yeah, dying. Sir, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go off. Sarazawa, MVP of this movie. He juices that lizard up because... It was the military's dumbass decision 
to use an Dude, oxygen Godzilla, Godzilla destroyer. Would Godzilla, yeah, would Godzilla, Godzilla would have killed Ghidorah right then and there. It was confirmed by the director. However, they needed the plot to go forward, so they're like, let's drop this experimental oxygen destroyer. Oxygen destroyer. And so... Dude, I was so... <laughs> when they said the oxygen pissed. destroyer, I was laughing. Because I was like, damn. Now we're going to wait. Bye. Okay. Uh, Zerozawa. Sarazawa, okay. I was talking about it. Sarazawa's sacrifice. He's got that dog in him. He's the goat. Godzilla, like I said, he's pummeled by the oxygen destroyer. Ghidorah was unfazed. So poor Godzilla Badass. had Badass. Yeah. Dude, my jaw dropped. I'm like, oh my gosh, Ghidorah's alive. He's broken in half. And as an old school Godzilla fan, I appreciate them bringing back the oxygen destroyer. I'm like, no way. It's here. It's here. But you know what? They're also setting up too. They haven't added it in a film yet but i'm pretty sure they will in the near future destroyer because guess what the oxen destroyer created back in the old toho films destroyer mm-hmm. so that's what they're probably going to do as like alluding a whole, to like the final monsters film is probably what destroy all monsters that's what they're probably going to do but anyway godzilla goes back to his lair he's all fucked up injured and sarazawa decides to take it like damn us. let's take a let's, <coughs> let's just Give him a nuke to juice him up. Yep. They literally Dude, yeah, that they, place they're in. Oh, I wish we could have spent more time down true. there. True. And if you look closely, Angiris makes an appearance while his dead body does. So, oh, for real? Yeah, he does. Ooh, I need to tell my friend about that. So going off on a tangent. So when the when the final uh GVK trailer came out, and you know they showed like a trailer part of the trailer is like these humans running down the stairs running away from destruction and you can't really see what's up there right my guess was Mechagodzilla I was like that's what's coming out and my friend Adam said um what's his name Angrius Angiris Angiris yeah he said like that's who it is and I was like it's Mechagodzilla why are they gonna throw in the third villain to be like just some somebody people don't really don't know for uh are you talking about GVK yeah I was like why are you gonna bring in somebody people don't know and I know Godzilla fans are going to know him, but like to the casual audience, no one's going to know him. You bring oh. in Mecha Godzilla, and then the toy Mecha Godzilla came out, and you know proved me right. I, w- I we bet a dollar on that, and I won. Oh, like I I speculated too, like those little screen grab. I'm like, that's Mecha G. It has to be. There was like so much evidence, and right after GVK came out, not GVK, King of the Monsters came out as well. Um, some leaker, notable leaker, came out saying, like, oh, yeah, Mechagodzilla's going to be in the next one. He's going to have these claw machine hands. He's going to kind of look like the Terminator. I'm like, intriguing, intriguing. Yeah. And people are like, oh, he's not going to be in it. And I'm like, look at the end of King of the Monsters. They said a mechanized titan's being built on Skull Island, even though he really I had to wasn't. pause it because there's, like, <laughs> so many Easter eggs in the end so credits many. of King of the Monsters. But, yeah, Sarah's always like, got to nuke it up. Said and they're like, oh, we can't go down there because radiation is the. And Sarah's always like, hold my beer. Yeah, because he basically worshipped Godzilla as a god. He carries a nuke, sets it for sixty seconds, and I loved this scene because in Godzilla twenty fourteen we got him like looking at Godzilla as inspiration. And then in this movie he gets to put his hand on Godzilla and he says goodbye, my friend, or something like that. Yes. And then again, I love that. I love the sound, not the sound, because it goes silent. I love it. I just hate that they destroyed it. Everything down there. The temple. Oh, I was like, guys, take pictures or something. It's it's uh, it's Godzilla's healing bath. He's like, oh, the Polynesian spa. Dude, he was probably <laughs> he was probably pissed. He's like, he's like my, my home, home. <laughs> y'all. Whatever. And he comes back. But he got juice, so hey, yeah. he got something. Dude, out when of he it. comes back and he's like, you know, beaming up into the atomic breath up into the sky. Oh, and don't forget, his size increased as well. He got juiced, literally. His spines got bigger. He got bigger. He got a lot more thicker. Boy, damn, he thick. Now, now he's fat. Now he's fat. <laughs> I wouldn't say fat. He's juiced. He's like Brock Lesnar big. So, he's huge. So in that same scene when he comes back um, above the ocean, he, like, he starts like kneeling down. He starts looking at the humans. And he's like dogging them. And I'm like, I know this is supposed to be cool, but imagine if this scene... Do you remember Godzilla 2014 mm-hmm. when... Um, there's a scene where Aaron Taylor Johnson's character is like walking down and he like limping and he's hurt. And then he looks to the left and Godzilla just fell and Godzilla and him make eye contact. Imagine if this scene, instead of the dad, it was Aaron Taylor Johnson and Godzilla was like, Hey, it's the, like Godzilla recognizes him. This is the good guy. This is the good (coughs) guy. 
This movie would have been so much fucking better with him. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't bring him back because I was honestly. He probably didn't want to come back. He's probably working on something. True. Yeah, I, I mean, he what. played he played Quicksilver too. So that wasn't in 2017 though. Yeah, true. Dude, Aaron Taylor Johnson had a big 24. He had Godzilla and Age of Ultron. Yeah, you didn't see that coming. Whoa, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> Whoa, they should have kept him alive. Forgot about that. Should have realized that. And that's funny well, too. And that's funny too. Uh, he he was married to Elizabeth Olsen's character, and then they're siblings. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> Incest. I didn't see that coming. I really didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> but yeah, Sarazawa gets he nukes himself to save Godzilla and all that stuff. And now we got Ghidorah versus Godzilla again, round three, and Godzilla's juiced. Like you said, juiced. He's beating the living shit out of Ghidorah. And at this oh, point... Don't, wait, wait, wait. Let me go back a little bit. Before uh, Ghidorah is summoned, him and Rodan are terrorizing Washington, D.C. I was just about to it's say. It's flooded, fire coming out. With Tornadoes. Yes. Shit. It's crazy. And then Ghidorah, when he does his infamous call on the volcano, he just summons all the Titans to awaken from their hibernation. They start terrorizing everywhere. Dude, He's basically all the like, designs for those. Beautiful. We got a Mudo coming back, too. Yep. A weirdly looking one. Her name mm. is, uh, what's, I think her name's Heather or something. They gave her an official name. It's weird. <laughs> but he, it's an armored Mudo. Yeah. So it's a Mudo in between. It's Mudo Prime stage and the female Mudo. So oh, okay. it's aging up. All so. of, I love that. I forget his <laughs> name, but that mammoth looking one. Behemoth. Yeah. Oh, Behemoth is design. amazing. I'm kind of mad we didn't get much. Of, they just showed up and that was it. I'm just glad we got more monsters. We got Sky, uh, Scylla or Skyla. It's like this little like crab kaiju. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Pretty badass kaiju. We get that. We get Behemoth. Then we get um, Methasula? Methasula, which is this big turtle kaiju that has like a mountain on they its They should have just named it Gamera, dude. G- <laughs> the freaking Gamera? Yeah. Uh, they don't have the rights. That's I know why. they don't, but they should have just done it. if they do, there's a possibility that they Godzilla still Godzilla versus the Gamera? Right. I oh. want that movie so bad. I really do. Oh. I remember I have, I think I still have it. I have like the 11 movie collection of Gamera. I, I mean, there's a possibility that they might, they still could get Gamera because Gamera is getting a Netflix series this year. So there's a high probability a legendary could be like, hey, we want to buy the rights to your monster and maybe to make it a destroy him. I wouldn't, I would honestly want to see a team up movie with oh, Gamera. Team ups. No, 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 no. I want Godzilla, Kong, and Gamera all versus Destroya. That would be badass. Who wouldn't want that? Ups. I wouldn't want that. I would want that. Like, I would want him to fight, but I want that. I really want to see three of my childhood kaiju giant monsters go up against the big threat, which is Destroya. He's meant to be the end-all kaiju, because this motherfucker killed Godzilla in the old films. So, nobody kills Godzilla, but this guy. Humans kill Godzilla every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Just in 1954, that was about yeah. it. Yeah, so we finally get Godzilla versus Ghidorah again, and oh my god, this is, oh my gosh. I just love the music. I, I'm going okay. to talk, talk about the shitty stuff. Okay, I'm going to talk about the shitty ahead, stuff. Go ahead. Nothing shitty about the fight. But um, in this fight, we get more hu- bullshit human stuff. Millie Bobby Brown running around with the orca. She runs somewhere to hide. Where the fuck are you going to hide? Oh, my gosh. We got Godzilla fighting Ghidorah. We have Jets coming in, helping out. And then we have the parents looking for Maddie. Millie Bobby Brown's character. And it's just a whole bunch of destruction. We find out that Maddie went to their old home. The home is destroyed. But guess what, dude? Maddie is in a bathtub and she's alive. But she's like passed out. And I was like, what made you pass out? (laughs) The lightning. (laughs) Like, how'd you pass out? I, like, it was over her, right? She didn't get hit. And if she did get hit, there was no cuts no bruises blood, or no nothing. nothing and she's just passed out and they're like oh we can't lose this one either from the debris chest compressions chest compressions and then she's just like <gasps> oh my gosh I'm al- i hate it i hate it when movies do that like someone's <laughs> just dead quote unquote dead and they're just like the mind <gasps> <out there. laughs> oh i'm like Whoa. <laughs> blood she's guy. just alive and I, I, i'm literally just like there in the theater shrugging my shoulders i'm like just end it already. Blood got transported and in Stranger fixed, Things. The orca's destroyed, <laughs> dude. And they're fixing it right there to save Godzilla. And they're fixing it in the rain. The shit's getting wet. 
actually, uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit too. You missed a key scene in the fight. Godzilla was kicking Ghidorah's ass, and then we had Mothra versus Rodan, which is a first. I, I don't think to talk about the bad first. <laughs> oh, sorry, but we didn't we didn't get that. I don't think we ever got that fight. Mothra versus Rodan. That was a first fight, and seeing them go at it was badass. And Mothra Bro, had seeing that Mothra stinger. fly down, and then you just see Rodan just come out of nowhere. Yeah, and don't forget, Mothra has a new ability. She has a little wasp stinger. She, she has a little the stinger shit at the end. Out of Rodan. Rodan's like. Argh. Oh, I can't breathe. Oh, it just falls down like a little sissy. And there's like fire coming <laughs> out of the wound, badass. Amazing. And then, um. Come on, ice cream, man. Oh. Upcharging us $5 for a fucking ice cream? Let me tell you something, Slippy Joe and this ice cream man, they need to quit collaborating and quit trying to interrupt our podcast. We're trying to make beautiful, amazing content here. Probably some of the best content. Enough, Slippy Joe and ice cream man. I forgot to mention, we got a special, special guest star, uh, Mr. Lump. Former President. Ronald Lump. What? I think his name's Ronald Lump. It ain't, it's a, his failed clone that they cloned of him, <laughs> Ronald Lump. So he's a little unhinged. <laughs> who, who are you calling unhinged? I'm not unhinged. I'm probably the smartest person. Hey, both of you, both of you, just stop it. Okay. You don't tell me to listen. I am the leader here. I I own this podcast. I'm probably podcast nine. I'm the best podcaster. Trust me. I was on the Joe Rogan show. I was on. I was on the Joe Cronin podcast. I was on all the podcasts. Trust me. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Get your yeah, you fat can ass you out can of here. here. Get go. What, what, go. No, no, what are you doing? No. Okay. Oh, had to get. God, you had to get his here. fat ass out of the way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Really nice dude though. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know that yeah, motherfucker hated dude, ice cream. They're fixing the orca in the rain. This shit's and it's pouring and pouring, and I'm just like, here comes the ice cream. <laughs> oh, he's back. I told you, I told you the ice cream man was collaborating to destroy the planet. Shut up. Fuck you. No, fuck you. Uh, we can't. We really, can't really, really, by everybody. We really gotta lock that door. We do. Let me, let me. Yeah, it's locked. All right, we're good. Gotta get them out of here. Sheesh. Like, there's a lot of bullshit in this movie, but like them fixing the orca with like wires out and open and trying to fix it. That was the most bullshit thing in the entire movie. Honestly, <laughs> the orca's waterproof. Oh my. <laughs> That's why they're like, you know what? It's waterproof. The water can't do nothing. Isn't the water doing something? Uh, waterproof. It's, it's called the Dude, orca. Dude, there's wires sticking out. It's called the orca for crying out loud. <laughs> oh my gosh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I talked about the bad. You can talk about the rest okay, of the good. Okay, so anyway, Godzilla was kicking Ghidorah's ass. Mothra kicked Rodan's ass. Ghidorah's like, hmm, you got you stuff? Two could play at that game. Oh, that and then scene. he literally puts all of his heads and absorbs electricity from a power pole gets juiced up electricity blasts from his wings dude it was everything. fucking badass and this fool mercs mercs godzilla he was like okay you know what i'm gonna drop you from space yep literally <laughs> that was incredible this motherfucker picks up godzilla himself Dude, chokes him out <laughs> chokes him out like a snake I, that's what i love about Ghidorah. he was like a snake in this movie i think his tails are like rattlesnakes they yes. shake like rattle in and, the, and the people were telling me like oh he's not a snake he's a dragon i'm like he's a fucking he, alien yeah he's an alien dragon that acts like a snake why can't he have snake features that makes you him badass pissy about a <laughs> yeah a fucking fantasy monster yeah and so this fool picks up godzilla takes him literally up, up into in, the atmosphere. Yeah, atmosphere. Drops him. Boom! Huge explosion. And then Mothra's like, okay, I gotta help this fool out. Yeah, Godzilla can't do it. Godzilla can't do it no more. Mothra's like, okay, I'm gonna help my hubby out. And then Mothra flies into Ghidorah's beams, perishes, and all Dude, of her life Ghidorah force. was just like, fuck you. Yeah, pretty much. Mercs Mothra. The about- audacity to come and fly at me. She did it on she purpose. She takes though. she t- I know she does, but she takes it like straight in the face yeah. and just explodes. Poor Mothra. I'm like, yo, Mother just exploded. Poor Mother, she dies in every <laughs> She has a brutal mom. death. She has a brutal death. Poor Mothra. But her like ashes fall on Godzilla 
and he kind of glows red for a second. Mm-hmm. He's like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Uh. Teases us for oh, a bit. Oh, my God. I still have to talk about more bad. They fix the orca, and they're getting on the helicopter, and then the mom has, like, two minutes to get on the helicopter. She's like, no. <laughs> I have to start it over here. I can't start it on the helicopter. The Wi-Fi. Just it won't connect. I got to start it over here. She hits the button, and she starts driving in the other direction. I swear, dude, I thought Millie Bob Brown's character was going to run over there and, like, stop Ghidorah with Chris Pratt powers and just be like, no. Chris Pratt powers? I was thinking more of Eleven. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, she, like, uh, this, uh. <coughs> She's like, hey, cut, cut that shit out. <laughs> no, dude. Like, And then she drives off, and she's out running Ghidorah for, like, a minute, and then Ghidorah's just like, nah, fuck you. And before he has the chance to kill her, oh, boy. Well, anyway, she's in the her little vehicle, Getting away from the the chopper, and then she goes all the way out there. Ghidorah's like, and electrocutes. Dude, they literally show a shot of Ghidorah just like floating there, <laughs> like bullshit. Eh, Ghidorah kills the kills her. I so know, that- but like, no, actually, he doesn't kill her. He flips the truck over, yeah, the RV still, over, yeah. and then she's like, "Long live the king." I'm like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" And Ghidorah, and then turns out Godzilla's awakened from his fucking being knocked out. And it's just like he's burning Godzilla now. Badass. He is actually, I will give him a better name. Thermonuclear Godzilla, mind you, because this guy is absolutely OP. The he, very ground he's walking on, the melting. buildings around him, Everything's poles melting. melting. And it's amazing. I will say this. So he does his like, I don't even know what you would call it, like his attack that he does. It's a n- nuclear pulse type. Uh, his nuclear pulse, pulse, yeah. And as he releases it, you see Mothra's wings. I'm not gonna lie, the pulse is badass. Seeing Mothra's wings and sound there, kind of lame. Honestly, okay. They tried to make it work and it didn't. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, for me, I lost my shit. I'm like, hell yeah, and yes. So this did is I. What I want to see. I thought they executed that perfectly. I thought it was great, but like <coughs> on rewatch, I'm just like. Seeing Mothra's wings on there just didn't work. For me, it did. I just liked seeing their symbiotic relationship because the Mothra species and the Godzilla species actually work together multiple times. And just seeing that happen, I'm like, badass. Yeah. Badass moment. I So he does this moment. and he, dude, he stomps on fucking Ghidorah and like his foot is so hot, it like burns Melts. through him. Yeah. Ghidorah and just stomps it and then explosion. And you could see uh, Ghidorah's, like, his skull and everything melting. Oh, that was so good. It was however, so good. However, how did they recover Ghidorah? Wait, never mind. I know how they did that. It's You know how they recovered Ghidorah's skull? For, yeah, so... It turns out it was the head from Mexico. That's what it was. Because remember... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He regenerated. He ripped so, one off. Yeah, so that's... So, yeah, he from. ends up yeah. killing Ghidorah, and then all the, mon- all the other titans are like, the fuck? And then Godzilla's like... I'm I'm the captain now. And he's like, look look at me. I I am the captain now. This is my ship. I am the captain. <laughs> and the movie ends spectacularly with him just screaming, his roaring, and then the movie ends. And I was just and the movie ended, <coughs> and I was just like, everything human in that movie sucked. But like, like I said, it's very unique to have Godzilla in a place of power because they never really introduced the whole like. Um, alpha stuff in this in any monster any godzilla yeah, movie so new. i thought it was very unique i was just like it, we're in we're in a place right now where godzilla isn't just like i'm gonna kill everyone where he's in a place where he's in a place of power he like is. yo i got control over these right and i was like very very interested as to where were we gonna end up right but before we get into what came afterwards what did you give let me go first i gave godzilla king of the monsters a seven out of ten same thing as um uh, Kong Skull Island like I said everything monster movie in this is phenomenal but the human stuff really really um, really irks me I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 the monster we're not, the monsters, we're not that far off the, mon- the monsters carry the film so I give it an 8 the but, monsters but carry the you film. have to admit the human stuff really drives the movie yeah, down yeah, it does it does but um, I I will say Millie Bobby Brown actually was a better character in this movie compared to the next one coming up she's still shit <laughs> so when this movie came out 2022 2021 which one king of the monsters or next up we got godzilla versus kong godzilla versus kong okay this movie came out in 2021 
Well, that time has been two years. Yes. So it has. this was the fir- I have it in my notes right now. First movie um, out of COVID. Fun fact: This was actually supposed to come out in 2020, and then COVID happened. Yes. I think even as um, in 2019 when we got King of the Monsters, COVID was happening around the world, just not in the U.S. yet. Yes, and I remember I caught uh, a little personal story. I caught COVID around December. Um, of 2019? 2019, yes. Damn. Because um, you know how, like, they have a Chinatown in San Francisco and stuff, and a lot of people were coming down. For you like, were all the way days. over there? Fuck, uh, you were screwed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we actually just had a lot of visitors coming around our local part, and I was working, like, with food, and we didn't have any masks or anything at the time, and I ended up getting sick. Doctors didn't know what I had, and ended up catching COVID. Found out later on. I think on. I ended up getting COVID in 20. 20- when was it? I don't know how I survived. I really don't know. As asthmatic, I really don't know. I got COVID, oh, man, probably 2021, right? But I got it, and I had a sore throat for, like, like the night before. Like, I put in the paperwork at work and everything to not to tell them that I don't have to go into work because mm-hmm. I have COVID. And then, like, I was like, damn. Because my parents got COVID, and I thought it was going to – I saw – dude, they struggled through it. Oh. I saw it kick their ass ass and i was just like fuck dude i'm gonna have that for two weeks and i had a sore throat that first day and then the next day for the next two weeks i felt nothing dude it yeah, was i i had covid three times i had covid back in Damn. december of 2019 i had covid last year uh, around uh thanksgiving actually and i had covid this year oh shit i did but thankfully i'm okay and i just have a cough because of it because um it's like a side effect after. Yeah, you, remember, you remember Joe Maravia? Yeah. Uh, he's on the, he's on the Discord. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, he <coughs> he had COVID, and he got he he. T- I asked him about it because he he I, he also works at Amazon. No, he does. Yeah. So he he got it, and then he came back, and then I asked him about it, and he's like, he was gone for like a month, and I was just asking him about it, and he's like, dude, it was horrible. It is. Like he was so de- it was so bad for him. It sucks. But yeah, this was the first movie out of COVID. Pretty much. Um, and I remember I we had a watch party for it here. It came out in March, I think. Yeah. I watched it on uh, HBO Max. Yeah, so did I. That's when I first watched it. Yeah. And the next day, I went to go watch it at a, at a movie theater. I and that's when like there was like no movie theaters open. I had to go watch it in Dinuba. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even see it in the movie theater, this movie. It's a shame, too, because it was such a good movie. It sucked because um, it was my first time back in a movie theater in two years, <laughs> and the chairs were horrible, and my back wasn't used to it. Dude, I was like, I was like, like oh, oh, my back, oh, my I back. Like, Am I old? Did I age like 10 years in these last two years or what? Like it's um, been, it's but been no. 10 years since I've sat in a movie theater. First movie out of COVID. The trailers for it sucked. It, it, it felt like... It felt like they were painting, and I know in, in the so the trailers painted Godzilla as the bad guy and Kong as the good guy. The thing is, they painted Godzilla, no, not Godzilla, Kong, too much as a human. Yeah, like they gave him like so much facial animation, like they made him too human. Big human in monkey. this movie, um, <laughs> which is not bad at all. Not bad at all. What do you so? So you know, our first Kong Skull Island movie. Was it came out in 2017, but it's a timepiece. Yes. Right? And 20... Nope. Godzilla vs. Kong is, like, present, right? I, I really think Kong should have got a sequel. Before, I think so. Yeah. I mean, like, a sequel in this movie, like, from 2017 to 2021? They should They should have had a movie that... Years. They should have had a movie that took place... Liter- instead of making a comic, they should have had a movie that took place right after King of the Monsters, after Ghidorah's Call, and had a new titan go against Kong that led to the destruction of Skull Island. Exactly. That would have um, been amazing. Like the movie, like he should have fought off some other monster, and yeah. then the movie ends with like him sensing Godzilla's like, scream. Like, bu- like building up Kong's credibility. Like his only fight catalog is he just Sk- ate a big old squid, skull fought crawlers. skull crawlers. Like he really didn't have like a actual monster monster to go Which up explains against. why he gets fucking wrecked in this movie he does like godzilla like they show like in the, in the whole beginning of the movie it shows like who they wiped out kong is just little things godzilla all Rodan, Ghidorah, all these monsters all of the them Mudos. what do you think of them so i don't know what the time jump is between time piece 2017 uh, kong to this movie um but what do you think how do you think they what do you think of god 
Kong's design because he look he's aged up, <coughs> but he doesn't really look any different besides like having like he a does. beard. He honestly does. He he's a lot more beefier. He's bigger. I want to say this is the definitive Kong design. It's better than the Skull Island one. Surprisingly, like at first I was like, "Well, yeah," because he's like a y- lot like, younger than that. I was movie. like, "Let me think, let me think." And when I saw his design here, and he has the axe, I'm like, "Yeah, peak Kong design, perfect design." I love the idea with the axe and his species just being tool makers to combat the Godzilla species and everything else. Badass. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Kong turns out you know you know they're saving him from. Godzilla. Godzilla is just on a rampage, destroying shit, and it, dude. Somehow this movie looks better than the last one. It do, it does. It's like the CGI is a lot. It, better. it looks a lot. The better. models are. I'll better. say this though. Uh, I, it's not a like a huge down for me. It's just we went from 2014 Godzilla being very realistic and Godzilla's like a giant lizard moving like to no Godzilla's just quick. Like I, the, the physics I, don't make sense. I, I, okay. Now, granted, that's not enough to like <laughs> bring it down for me. Like, I still think it's amazing, but like they just threw it out of the park. Okay. They're like, no, we need him to be quick because Mecha Godzilla is quick as fuck he, in this movie. Here's my um, my counter statement to yours. Okay, I'm gonna compare. Okay, I don't know if you've seen Pacific Rim. The, I've seen both Pacific Rims. What do you think? Only, of, the second one is trash. Okay, first, you know, for the first Pacific Rim, everything felt heavy. And it just I can felt, feel the like, weight. Just, you can feel these. the weight. I can really the feel the second one. You can't feel Jack. But comparing that to GVK, you could still feel weight. They move quicker, but I. Still I know, but feel if you're comparing weight. GVK Godzilla's physics to 2014 Godzilla's it's physics, they're yeah. completely different. 2014, I feel like it's more of a standalone. Like think about thing. it. Think about when Godzilla lifts his tail yeah. to hit the Muto. He has to like fucking. You feel the weight of him just trying you to lift do. it up, right? In this movie. The sound he's design, so the sound design is great, but yes. I'm just saying, like movement wise, he's so much quicker. And, he is. Um, again, that's not enough to like. That's not a knock on the movie. It's just like yeah. they threw physics completely at the movie. It's they, like it's like I said with the whole. Okay, basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to expand more on the Godzilla lore. They want to make it more like how the classic old Toho movies were. 2014 was supposed to be basically a remake of the 1954 movie, pretty much. So. Well, there it's like each director has their own vision per se. So fifty four is like, oh, here's an introduction to Godzilla. This is how he would be in the modern day and age with realism. And then overall, they're they're probably pitching like, hey, let's make people want to see giant monsters fighting. So let's give the audience what they want. And so that's why they just like, okay, let's change it from a thriller to action packed. So that's like the whole vision. Same thing happened with the MCU and Iron Man. Iron Man was surprisingly really grounded for MCU movie, but then later on, they're fighting a big purple nutsack alien in space, collecting uh, freaking. But rocks. in terms of like, that's a comic book movie, right? That's I feel yeah. like that's the way. Le- I mean, it's crazy to think we got from like 2008 Iron Man to fighting Thanos. Yes, it's it's crazy to think we got from that far. But when you when you're speaking of it in the comic book aspect, yeah, it's not a real big jump. Yeah. And yeah, but um, this movie—it's similar in my opinion. I feel like this movie was just like, ah, let's take the good of uh, of King of the Monsters, and let's take some of the good from 2014 Godzilla and Kong Skull Island, and Pretty let's just much. bunch that up and give give us a movie. Oh, and they did just that. The oh. humans are nowhere, nowhere near as bad as they were in King of the Monsters. Now, oh, granted, right. it's right here on my notes. <laughs> What's the purpose of Millie Bobby Brown's character? <laughs> <laughs> Bro's just hating on Millie Bobby Brown. What does she do to you? <laughs> I just want good characters. <laughs> but I will say this: this is this, this entire universe, this monsterverse, is all compared like the characters. I'm comparing them to the 2014 Godzilla movie because yeah. like there isn't a single bad character in that movie. There isn't none of them. The ones that have the most screen time are the ones that have the least. There's no bad characters in Kong Skull Island. There's no bad characters. There's some okay boring ones. ones. Yeah. There's some boring ones. Ones that feel like out of place. And, but the other ones I enjoy. And King of the Monsters, I hate all of them. <laughs> Sub Zero is all like you gotta, the you gotta, script gotta, is bad too. Like you can have a bad character, but if your script is good, like if I don't feel the need for Millie Bobby's character, that's one thing. But the fact that her, she doesn't feel needed and the script is bad, that's something completely else. So like Millie Bobby Brown's character doesn't feel needed. <laughs> Especially in this movie. And two, movie, the yeah. script is bad. Even if they tried giving her less screen time in this movie, they still <coughs> give her a whole, like, 
how the fuck does she sneak into this military thing and then she's just in Japan? Okay, um, here's the thing. They had Team Godzilla and Team Kong. I absolutely... Going into this movie, who are you going for? Who do you think, like... (laughs) Godzilla, obviously. So I was Team Kong for one, one reason only, right? One, Kong's already beaten him before. Two, um... We don't know Kong as Kong. We know him as King, King Kong. Kong. So I was like, what better way to crown him the king of the monsters, King Kong, than to beat Godzilla, right? <laughs> and that was my logic, right? <laughs> and if, hey, say what you want. I think that's pretty good logic. I convinced I, many people I was with think, that. I, I was honestly thinking that as well. But and he's painted as the good guy in this movie. I was like, I, but, can't, I can't be wrong. But the thing is, they don't have him King Kong due to copyright. That's the thing. That's I why didn't know that at the time. Kong, so. but, but still, like, <coughs> you have to I admit, that's a pretty valid argument. I, I could see that as well. And, and I Kong, convinced many people. Kong apparently did. King Kong did beat Godzilla in their original he did. first meetup. He did. I don't know why that happened. But now I, I was rooting for Godzilla. I'm like, there's no way this, this guy could lose against a big monkey. Even that was, with my, that that was literally my only, like argument into him winning that was it i was like i want godzilla to win because how the fuck does kong beat him in the first one exactly but at the same time i'm like it's it's how you get the name and, king kong and plus the speculation too like oh I, people are like oh yeah there's not gonna be in any other they monster. even reference him as king because they're like yeah. kong bows to no one but uh, and all that stuff. <laughs> i love the trailers how uh freaking he's like we need kong the world needs him <laughs> just I'm <laughs> like, the world doesn't need Kong. They got Godzilla. We Kong, don't need, no, we don't need nothing. Like, 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 as long as monsters don't pop up, you are good. Like, Kong is just, he's literally just chilling in his island, scratching his ass, eating a banana. Like, why right. Why does the world need Kong? They got Godzilla as their savior. So the characters in this movie, they're all all right. They're there. They're not bad. They're good. But I, but actually, I really like the um the little deaf girl. She was I the star lo- of the movie. She really was, dude. I loved whenever we would hear like Kong stepping around and then the noise would fade away and turns out we were going into the perspective of um the little deaf girl as well. Yes. I always loved it. Or when like Godzilla and Kong first fight, right? We don't know what's about to come, but she puts her hand on the wall of the of the boat and she can sense, she can feel uh uh Godzilla's cry. Approaching. Yeah. Right, and I'm just like, they those people have a connection. This little girl is it. Yep. This little girl is it. And then we know Kong knows <coughs> sign language now. And a little fun fact: she's actually returning for the next movie. Sweet. Is she actually deaf? Yes, she is. Good. I think they do the same thing with the Quiet Place. Um, yeah, the daughter, she's deaf for real. I think they had. They said really they had good. to fight for to actually have a real deaf person on this. They, um, they did. Um, but yeah, I think really she good. and her like stepmom um probably my favorite characters in the movie uh even the the guy too um he was actually pretty good i just don't know his obsession with kong but he, he was he was a good he was i think a good his character. obsession is just his theory and, the theory and kong is like a key to that theory true um i said it i already said it but i'll say it again um i love that this movie just throws science out the window <laughs> they're just like alien, they're just like i know they're skull island but we have this portal that is legit a portal that'll shoot you through like some dimension or whatever okay, and okay. spit you into I'll, the hall I'll, I'll go I'll go into this thing okay basically what they do is they this is what I love they they did what the monsterverse is not entirely science it's pseudo science so they adapt these conspiracy theories and mythology and religion and combine it into one thing that's why some of the titans names are like greek or roman mythology like methasula and then Scylla and all these other ones like the behemoth behemoth is from the bible as well yeah and then the hollow earth is actually a conspiracy theory like there's actually like a whole thing about it i've heard of some theories like yes yeah um, so that's yeah. why that's what that's what I adore about the monster first. like hey let's take these crazy conspiracy theories and make them part of a movie I'm like and it'll make it'll it'll like make sense to most yes, people it's perfect and I just that's why I adore the monsters and I'm glad it like I remember after this movie people were like oh yeah there's there's not gonna be any other movie there's no more the, the monster versus done if it's gonna go forward they're gonna have just Kong because the rights for Godzilla were gonna expire you hear that I do the thudding little Godzilla off in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, so their first fight, Godzilla versus... Kong. Dude, it's so good. I'm not ready to resume. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, their first fight, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, on the ocean floor, on the ocean, on boats. 
on the um, aircraft carrier. It it's was all, a huge it's carrier. All so, granted, that was in the trailer. I feel like you got most of that fight in the trailer, but it was still badass. Still badass fight. It's just... I just love it because we haven't had anything like that before. Nothing. Like, we get we get to see Kong be a genius. He's like, damn, I got to get over there. Oh, let me use this. Uh, you get both sides. You get both of their, like, battle. Like, you get both Godzilla and Kong's minds working in this movie. True. Like, Kong is like, I got to get over here. I got to use these things. Godzilla's like, I can't. <laughs> like, I probably. It got, dude, Kong headbutts him. <laughs> Kong's like, whoa. I was like, whoa. Right, guys, I was like, damn, I probably can't beat him. Let me drag him down since he were in my foot. We're my playpen right now. Yeah, that's just terrible. And he does it. And it's it's fantastic. And, you know, that leads I us to... I literally him. thought he was going to kill Kong right then and there. He was gonna, like, I was like, hey, the movie just started. <laughs> <laughs> but, and yeah, so that leads us to them. I don't know how they are just, like, managed to get net a net big enough to carry Kong. I don't know how they managed to do that, but they I, did it. And they bring him to... What ice place are we in? Antarctica. 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 Another thing, too, I want to bring up. Uh, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, Kong's going to be a lot smarter than Godzilla. Godzilla's just going to be brute force and stuff. Not really. Godzilla, I feel like that's kind of true, but Godzilla's yeah. too powerful. Yeah, but he it does show signs of actual high intelligence, too. He's smart. This this motherfucker knows what he's doing. Like, think about when he gets... I mean, we'll, we'll get into it, but... Uh, yeah. So, they bring him to Antarctica, and they're like... They have to get him down there because of this portal, and it'll take him to Skull Island. What do you think of this Skull Hollow Earth Island design? Okay, Hollow Earth. I love it. It's just everything is just it's visually stunning, beautiful. So much better than Skull Island, in my opinion. I like how there's just so well, many. Well, their their description of that is like Skull Island is like somehow Hollow Earth just like shot up out. I don't know how that works though. It's uh, I like if we need yeah. a portal to get here. How did Hollow? How did Skull Island just? Because this is basically <coughs> Skull Island is the Hollow Earth. Yes. But on, you know, on Earth uh, oof, off, that, above ground. That's a good question. I don't know how, unless there's a portal. There is on probably Skull Island. They were saying, but at the same time, I don't. Because if you go back to Kong Skull Island, they're saying the Skull Crawlers came from the ground, which is obviously from the Hollow Earth. So that's where they're coming from. So, that's true. They got their homes in there. Yes, that's why. But still, you're telling me like the skull crawlers know that like they'll go in this portal and then shoot them over there, shoot them over here. Pretty much. And that's about it. Yeah. Pretty much. But yeah, this skull island. Not I, skull island. Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth. I mm-hmm. hope, I hope, that in the future of future projects, when we get back here, it's a little more terrifying than Skull Island was. Well, let's talk about it. We're not done with the Hollow Earth. We're getting we're getting more of it in the next film coming out next year, which yes, is uh, what's it called again? A new I Empire, a New Empire. Godzilla. Godzilla I think it's Godzilla Kong. and Kong. Yes. New Empire. They're going up against two new uh, Titans. Before we get into that, let's finish off okay. uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Already. So yeah, we get this new Hollow Earth. I say new. Yeah, it is new. Hollow Earth thing. Kong knows where he's going. It's weird how the Z, like the gravity in this place works. Zero gravity. It's a yeah. crazy. Um, God Kong knows how to work his way into things, and we get we also get Godzilla in like Japan, and he burn. How does this work? He burns a hole from Japan straight to the straight hollow earth. to the Hollow Earth. Okay, I, a lot of people, a few people, like casual people, really didn't like that. Me as a huge Godzilla fan, I loved it because it shows the strength and. The, the feats that Godzilla has. He's obviously going to be the strongest monster in that verse. So that's why it's just showing off how this much stronger. blew a hole through yeah, the earth. It shows how much stronger this guy has yeah, gotten. Yeah, but at the same time, it's just like, how? Like, does, does that not fuck up the earth? Uh, like, if I, I, I'll, I'll repeat the question. If we need a portal to get to the hollow earth, right? What the fuck does doing a one? How did Skull Island come up? Two, how the fuck does that hole in the earth just work? Well, he's Godzilla. That's what <laughs> hey, 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 it's he can Godzilla. Do anything, yeah, he can do anything. That fool could wipe the floor. Yeah, so he does that. We get these weird, like Power Ranger, Mighty Morphin Monster, Terra Birds. Again, Kong has an axe now, and then we get Godzilla versus Kong round two. 
in neon glowing Japan. I love that. I love the whole neon type setting. Beautiful. There's a dude who lives in Japan who watched the trailer and he's like, mm. I know they say this is in Japan, but like Japan isn't like this. <laughs> we don't <laughs> got neon lights. On top of that, neon lights like that are illegal. Like they can't have them on buildings. I still thought it was badass. It's still it's badass vi- though. Visually, visually it is very badass. Their fight, very badass. I loved when we'd get some like POV shots of Kong when he's holding <clears throat> Godzilla. Yeah. All so cool, and it's exactly what you'd expect. It's just it's Kong versus Godzilla, and don't That's forget, fight. don't forget, Kong gets his weapon beforehand, which is an axe from his ancestors, and apparently there was a great Kong versus Godzilla war where their species were going at it, and Kong finds like this, or they were wrong. working together to defeat the new enemy. Hmm. Well, that's what they're apparently setting up. There was a Kong Godzilla war. However, I'll get more into that. For we'll the get into one. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, they, they, round yeah. two. And then I guess like what even happened? I guess got Kong like Godzilla powers up the axe by blowing his atomic breath on it. And then Kong misses. Right. He hits a building. He doesn't hit Kong, Godzilla. He hits a building and shit yeah, just explodes first. and it blows them apart. And then to let us know that Kong went around, they're like, guess round two goes to Kong. I'm like, but then they get up like five minutes later, right? I'm sure, just like, actually, uh, round two really doesn't. It's because um, Godzilla, when Kong's running running from Godzilla, just jumping on building and building, Godzilla just <laughs> shoots atomic breath, hits Kong in the back, falls down, and Godzilla just starts laughing at him. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that I was like, that fucking scene. menace. That, that, that shows that Godzilla's really intelligent. I kind of didn't. Okay, so I really love the fight. I was just like, is it a, I mean, I guess he had to. I was about to say, I... I I don't really like that that's all he used his atomic breath but he's like he's like i can't beat this dude probably like one-on-one like i can't get to him because he's swinging around yeah he's let me use my atomic breath yeah. um yeah so that happened and then well that's his signature thing obviously that's what he's going to use to if, if he has the energy to spam it he's going to spam it so he needs then, to ground kong so he could focus on him and then like literally five minutes even though they said like round two goes to kong five minutes later they get back up and they start fighting again mm-hmm. and Godzilla's never looked scarier, dude. Yeah, he was all four. He was acting like an alligator going after him. Literally dislocates Kong's shoulder Mm. because we need our dude to have adversity. Um, Chasing him down, scratches his chest. I was like, ouch, oof, ouch. And don't forget the most painful thing. He puts all of his force on his foot. And he stomps stomps on him again. The same thing he did to Ghidorah. Stomps on him. And he's just like telling him to submit. And Kong, more. And then uh, this part I hate. I was like, it's too campy, but it's Godzilla, right? And when he's like, he like gets up, he's like, we're good. I'm like, <laughs> all you had to do was mind your business. And that was it. But like, we need the, like the tip of the hat. You're good, dude. You're good. And then that's it. So we think, and then we get in like the last like 10 minutes of the movie. They're like, oh no, Mecha Godzilla is here. What do you think of Mecha Godzilla's design? Best Mecha Godzilla design in my opinion. By I far, love it. I okay. I'm gonna go off right now. Go ahead. Okay, we skipped a huge portion. This is like the the they want to establish Mecha Godzilla's lore. They're like, hey, Apex is building a weapon. Why is Godzilla attacking us? It's because Apex is using the Orca to to help frame Godzilla, so that way they could have the go ahead yeah. to unleash this me- mechanic mechanical Titan, which is Mecha Godzilla. And nobody, they kept his existence secret. So Millie Bobby Brown's character and the kid from Deadpool 2. Along oh, yeah, with, I skipped through all that because I don't yeah. want to talk about Millie Bobby Brown no uh, <laughs> I'll talk about it. And along with uh, this conspiracy theorist guy, which I actually liked in the film. His name was Bernie. He was cool. He was He's really actually cool. going to be in the next movie as well, thankfully. He was in Eternals. He, uh, he was. Yeah, you're right. He was Fastos, right? Yep. Oh, there you go. So Fastos is in the movie. <laughs> And so um, he has a crazy conspiracy. He's like, yeah, Apex is just framing Godzilla. And so they, they sneak I into I love him. how he has a podcast. <laughs> we got to give up to him. It was meant to be. We got to give up to him, the good old Bernie Fastos. And so anyway, um, they go to the Apex facility and they witness um, this giant, huge skull crawler that they unleash. And they see these big old claw machine like hands grab him lift him up and you see this mechanized titan which is mecha godzilla he looks like godzilla had a love child with the terminator glows bright red beautiful design because gunmetal or black or whatever and along with red favorite color palette red yes red is always good yes and he 
the Godzilla does the problem with Mecha Godzilla is he doesn't have enough energy to power him. So he wastes an atomic like a actually not atomic. Like it's a laser a, beam? It's a proton screen. So he launches a proton screen and literally shreds the giant skull crawler. In the, half. In dude. half. Disgusting. Ugh. Shows the strength uh, of this guy. He was able to hold just the skull crawler right there. Mm-hmm. Just hold it and there. And so Apex was working with Team Kong to retrieve some of the hollow earth energy to help power Mecha Godzilla. Like I said, so, they threw science right out the window. Yeah. So the any way they do that and plot twist, we learn that Sirizawa's son, this, this is my nitpick, they should have done more with Sirizawa's son and they should have established him as the villain. Right. And so basically he was supposed to be piloting uh, he's supposed to be fusing his brain with uh, King Ghidorah's skull, a kind of similar to Pacific Rim type deal, and they're trying to use it to control Mecha, the pilot Mecha Godzilla. However, Ghidorah takes control of Mecha Godzilla and makes him go on a rampage. So when you hear Mecha Godzilla roar, you could hear a little bit of Ghidorah in there as well. A little fun fact for you guys, and so Mecha Godzilla is unleashed upon the world, just starts destroying everything in sight i'm like yes this is the mecha godzilla and I love. he wrecks godzilla he beats the beats shit the out of him shit out of him dude like charges his punch like this mecha godzilla has the most weapons out of any mecha godzilla i'm sorry kiryu but you you're gonna get your ass wrecked because this fool this, has this mecha godzilla was fast and dangerous dude and it's like like it wasn't just like a Using typical like Godzilla maneuvers, like it was manhandling Godzilla. It was. It was like legit kneeing him, punching him, using his thrusters to thrust him forward to beat him. His his beam was stronger than Godzilla's. He, fuck, I'm granted Godzilla just got done fighting Kong. True. Whatever. But like he wrecked him. He beat the wrecked shit out of him. Godzilla. And throwback to the um. So this happened. So God Kong is like dying. <laughs> and if you remember the first ever Kong versus Godzilla movie, um, Godzilla beats him. And then just randomly, Kong gets struck by lightning, brings him back to life. And, and he this gets movie, electric powers too, don't forget that. In this movie, <laughs> he doesn't get struck by lightning, but they're like, well, let's use these flying devices that we have to the, put him on there. The and a, They're called the Hebs. These have enough energy to power uh, Las Ve- the Las Vegas Strip. And they're like, <laughs> oh! Let's, like, shock his heart science out the window. And that's, like, a little homage to the old movie. And they're like, let's do just that. (laughs) That's, like, the third train today. I did the podcast with Adam and, like, only, like, maybe two passed by. And then I was like, I mean, it is two o'clock, though. And usually me and Adam shoot these at, like, fucking six (laughs) o'clock. Yeah, completely wrecks Godzilla, and they well they bring back Kong from the dead, and now we get Kong. Ver- oh, by the way, the little deaf girl convinces Kong to be like, "Hey, Godzilla's your friend. Team up." And Kong's like, "Ugh, fine." Uh, he gets up and he's like, "Oh, fuck my shoulder," and he pops that motherfucker back into place. And don't forget the shot that looks badass when he does that. And he, yeah, the little crash zooms. Like, yeah, and the camera zooms on him. And he's badass. ready to In kick some ass. But regardless. And <laughs> we get it. Kong and Godzilla versus Mecha, Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla. We've ne- okay. We've never gotten that fight in the history of any movie. We've never even seen Kong go up against a Godzilla villain, too. So this is the first time. So see Mecha Godzilla go up against Kong? Hell yeah! And they destroy Mechagodzilla. Now, there's a, there's a point where... Actually, no. A- no, no, no. Let me let me start off. Actually, in the beginning, Mechagodzilla's kicking both of their asses until Kong gets gets his axe powered by Godzilla. Well, no, well, so they're beating up Mechagodzilla. Mechagodzilla then gets the upper hand, mm-hmm. and then he's about to, like, shred Kong oh, yeah. with his tail, and then... Millie Bobby Brown's character <laughs> and the dude from Deadpool 2 with the fire powers <laughs> and the dude from Eternals. They're like, what do we do? And Deadpool character guy is just like, oh my gosh, you have alcohol. Let's pour it in the computer system <coughs> to fry the system. And then God, Mecha Godzilla like twitches for a second. He's like, what the fuck? And then they just... And then Godzilla powers up Godzilla. Godzilla powers up Kong's axe 
mm-hmm. and now it can slice through Kong. Through Kong? Through Kong. Now it can slice through <laughs> Godzilla. There's too many words. Yeah. So Kong is slicing, like, literally, Mechagodzilla, like, he's butter. Yep. Just tear, and then he sh- rips his head off bad i was like oh don't don't drink that and i thought he was gonna do it out and he's just roaring in victory and then you know now we won and then kong's like oh oh my god we did it and then godzilla's like we we ain't done yet <laughs> put the and God, kong still has his axe <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, like he's like put that shit down he's like <laughs> you see look at you <laughs> left me <laughs> you left me alone for like <laughs> 10 minutes oh my gosh kong screeches kong submits Godzilla screeches Kong's image. Actually, not really submit. It's more of a mutual respect, to be honest. Because Kong technically saved Godzilla for a bit. Yeah. So it's a mutual respect. So, yeah. So then the movie ends. So, yeah. Kong throws the axe down. Godzilla screeches. And it's a pretty badass shot. And and, and, then the movie ends. And uh, this rating... I want to give this fucking movie a 9 out of 10. I don't give a shit. I love this movie. Um, I really do. One common complaint I see is that, did we really get a winner? And I was like, we did. We did. We did. We did. So that's that's my answer to that. Yeah, we did get a winner. Godzilla himself. Yes, He's sir. The but Mecha Godzilla is the winner of my book. He beat the living shit out of both of them. I just realized I don't think I ever made a review for GVK. I guess, you, I guess we do. Now we do. <laughs> I am going to give it... What did you give it? Nine out of ten. I love it too much. Especially... I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. I'm just a huge Mechagodzilla fan. One of my favorite kaiju. I literally have a freaking costume of this motherfucker. I do. That shit is badass. I will... Send me a picture of that. I'm going to post it on Instagram. Okay. It's um, badass. But yeah. um, Eight out of ten. I just don't love this movie more. I love this movie, but I don't like it more than Godzilla 2014. (sighs) I actually... I actually if do, anything, it's on par with it, and that's only because you get badass fighting. The rewatchability of it too is really, really good. And oh yeah, I I just lost my. I was so fucking hyped to watch this movie. I literally had, literally, Mecha Godzilla wasn't revealed until the day the movie came out. I even it actually came out the day before. Yeah, and day they before. Reve- and the only reason I say revealed is because at the day before it because was a um, I didn't see a T-shirt. I saw a toy. Oh, uh-huh. I saw the toy of it, and that won me my one dollar bet with Adam. And I literally, I literally had a T-shirt ready to go that came the day before the movie, and I was like, "Yep, I'm rocking this yes, shit." Sir. I need, I need, so yeah, I gotta get ready for this. So that's movie. that's the MonsterVerse. Um, we already mentioned it a little bit, but we got a movie coming out next year in March. I think in March. Oh, I hope so. The earlier, the better. We got that movie, unless no, it's coming out in March. It's March. Yeah. Um, yeah, we get Kong and Godzilla. Godzilla and Kong versus. Not versus nope. New Empire. Yeah, we got... I mean, they're going to verse somebody. I'll tell you who they're going to fight. Spoiler alert. They're going to be Spoilers. Fighting. If you don't want to know any of this, um, too bad. <laughs> this is a little spoiler alert, mind you. Okay. They're going to be fighting against a new species that's similar to Kong. Orangaroo? Nope. His name is... I was just guess- that's, a, that's a Pokemon name that I just threw out. <laughs> He's actually called the Scar King. That's his name. Also, they're going up against another Titan. I don't want to reveal it, but it's apparently the oldest and biggest Titan we're ever going to see in the MonsterVerse. And it's going to be in cahoots with I am this. so glad we only have to wait till March. Yeah. Now, so. granted, what is that, like nine months away? True. Well, I know this movie's going it, to... It's, it's yeah. going to be amazing. If, it, if it's the same guy following same the formula as GVK, it's going to be a great just film. Just throw a science at the window. Do it. And just and give us the fights. They're bringing back a few GVK characters as well. Fast like, and loud. Yep. So I'm glad. Yeah. Overall, monsters. Overall, how pleased are you with the MonsterVerse? These five movies? Really satisfied. Uh, honestly, I know everyone's favorite universe is the MCU, but MonsterVerse. I don't think it's everybody's favorite universe. Well, uh, well, Star Wars universe. True, you're right. Harry Potter universe. Uh, every, I don't even watch Harry Potter. You have, have you seen Harry Potter? I have. I'm just not a big fan of it. Oh, how, ooh, ooh, my step. Uh, I'll, I'll know to I'll know to not invite you for that episode. <laughs> my stepdad is a Harry Potter fan, but me, I'm I'm not really into Regardless. it. Regardless, I don't dislike it. I'm just not having caught interest in it. That's fair. But, um, 
MonsterVerse, probably going to be my all-time favorite. I, I just love it too much. I grew up with Godzilla. I literally, I'm, I'm just obsessed with it. And I'm looking forward to the new movies, the Netflix project, and then the Apple TV series yes, called sir. Monarch. Yes, I'm excited for all that, too. I am hyped. And, and okay, sorry to interrupt. Toho, Toho is releasing another Godzilla film coming out, I think, oh, yeah. this year. Oh, yeah, this year, yeah. This year? Holy shit, I, I barely realized that. It's going to be badass. Yeah. That one's also a timepiece. That takes place, I think, before the first Godzilla movie. I, or it might be after that one. I'm, it's it, it is a time piece, set, It's its own set universe, too. Yeah. Like Shin Gojira, it's going to be the same thing. It's a movie I don't like. You don't like Shin Godzilla? I don't. Damn. I actually <laughs> but like that's a conversation that for another day. <laughs> another day. Um, yes, so that's the MonsterVerse. I want to thank you, John, for slash Novonix, and for being on this podcast. I know we've been talking about this one for a while now. <laughs> a I mentioned to you time. a while ago. Um, but yeah, happy to have you on here. Um, anything, anyone, any place you would like to shout out, this is your time to do. All right. What you're doing, what you're working on, anything. Okay. Be sure to follow. Give my pal Andy here a follow. Thank you. Plug in his content here. He's an excellent content creator. This this motherfucker's been hustling. You got to give it up to him. And I got to plug it in. I'm sorry. Be sure to check out Five Nights at Freddy's Demons of the Past, a fan-made movie in the works since 2017, finally premiering August 8th, the full movie. Each chapter is being released monthly. But on August 8th is when this movie is going to premiere. It might be already out by then, but be sure to check it out if you want to see some live-action animatronics. I know we have the official Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out later October, but hey, if you want to check this out, just check it out. It's a great movie, great thriller, comedy, everything you want in a film, and there's actually a few cameos in there that you might want to stick around and watch. There you go. Make sure to check that out. Make sure to check out Novonix on Instagram. That is... In case the people don't know how to spell it. It's going to be in the comments regardless. The description below is going to be N-O-V-A-N-I-X. Novonix. Check that out. Instagram. Or TikTok as well. Yeah, I was about to say. Check them out on TikTok, Instagram. He does have a YouTube channel. Check that out. Um, if you want to check out his uh, Fire Nights at Freddy's, Demons of the Past, Chapter 1, and then every every other episode that's coming out, check that out on Great Films. That's G-R-E-Y-T Films. All caps. Check that out. Uh, yeah, but like I said, it has been an absolute pleasure, John. Same with you. Um, I'm not going to even announce the future episodes that you're going to be on, but stay tuned for those. Really appreciate it. All right. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was me and John talking about the monster verse. Hope you guys enjoyed. Man, was this episode really fun to shoot. Yeah, I just want to give a thanks to John for agreeing to be on this episode. And not even just like agreeing and willing, but like actually wanting to be on the podcast to talk about a franchise that he adores. As you guys can tell, he really adores his franchise. And it was really interesting to get his like perspective on not just Godzilla, but the entire franchise as it is. Because although I love some of it, there's a lot of it I really, really hate. But it was really good to get a, a, a different take on it. So yeah, thanks John for being on the podcast for that. And like we said at the end there, he will be on the podcast sometime later this year. I'm not going to put out what those episodes are going to be just yet, but him and I had planned on having him on more episodes later on in the year. Uh, we already know what we're going to be talking about, and it's just a matter of time before I you know, announce what those episodes are going to be and when they'll be. But yeah, until then, make sure to follow John, a.k.a. Novonix, on TikTok and Instagram. And subscribe to him on YouTube. Again, that's Novonix. That's N-O-V-A-N-I-X on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out his uh, Five Nights at Freddy's fan film, Five Nights at Freddy's Demons of the Past, on great films on YouTube. Once again, if you want to watch Five Nights at Freddy's Demons of the Past, his fan film, you can check that out on Great Films on YouTube. That is G-R-E-Y-T Films on YouTube. And while you're doing all that, make sure to follow All Elite Movie Rants on Instagram. That's All Elite Movie Rants on Instagram. And if you're the type of person who likes to watch people react to things, go ahead and check out All Elite Reactions on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. Again, that's All Elite Reactions on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. One more time before we head out of here, I want to give a huge shout out to our special guest for this episode, that being John, a.k.a. Novonix. 
a huge thanks for joining me on this very special episode of the podcast where we talk about the monsterverse because i knew john was going to be a a delight to talk to especially about a franchise that he adores like the monsterverse so huge shout out to john thank you john for being on the podcast for you know this very special episode and like i said guys check him out on youtube instagram and tiktok and till the next episode see ya